<clears throat> Hello. I think we're up and running. Hi all. Matt Cross and Spear Memories, Lee Ashby here. Hope you're all good. <laughs> Not sure who that is, but <laughs> If anyone's on here as well uh, about uh, the photography I did last night at Thornbury Practice MX, um, I'll get back to all your messages uh, after I finish this live interview because I have seen them. I have uh, seen there's quite a few on there. I will get back to you. I've been sorting out quite a few of the riders and I'll get back to you after this. So no worries. Evening, Scott. Hope, hope you're good. Got some cool team green gear, buddy. No worries, buddy. I'll uh, catch up with that after. Good to be here, not sure who that is, but uh, hi. So basically all you guys, uh, before I get the man on, he'll be coming on very soon. Uh, anyone that's coming in on Facebook, look, so you see uh, Chris here, look, he comes up with his profile, so I can see you, I'm quoting like that there, look. But if you don't uh, click on the link before you come into the live video, I'll get that, so I don't know who I'm talking to. So like Mick there, look, and one here. So basically, I just won't be able to uh, quote you who I'm talking to and on the screen. But good evening to you, Ryan. So uh, any of you guys on the Facebook, you can just come out of here, click on the link in the post and then come back into the video. And it should have given uh, the privacy permission and all that's a usual thing. Like John there. Good evening from Denmark. How's it going, John? Hope you're good. Larson. Hoping I've been chasing up um, Nicky Pedersen as well from Denmark, Speedway man, proper legend. Uh, I've got a, a coat here of Nicky Pedersen as well that uh, my mate Pete, Peter Jeffrey give me. <laughs> He's not late, don't worry. I told him to come on at 10 past because I said I normally uh, say a few hellos and all that, so he's not late. <laughs> so I'm, I'm presuming that might be Adam Lyons then from uh, Coles. Uh, <laughs> hopefully Adam will come out of here, click on the link in the post, Adam, and then come back in. The helmet behind me is from my uh, buddy, uh, Mr. Carl Balfield. Uh, he wore it at the reunion in April. Pretty cool, Shuey. Well, uh, put a bit of a sticker on there. I may, I may have added that. <laughs> but yeah, he was very nice. I said to him, I've always wanted a Shuey. And he was uh, saying, do you know if anyone would want to have it for like some memorabilia or whatever? So I'm like, how yes. In the background, buddy. 100%. So yeah. That's from my buddy, Mr. Balfield. We used to race together as well. I think we can say it like that, can't we? Yeah, just about. Yeah, that's my own caps. I'm getting them out there. Yes. Hello, Mr. Gav Richman. I hope I have. <laughs> or is it just the air cut? See my uh, nice uh, letterbox tan I got the other day from doing the getting back on the pictures. So I had to put my hat backwards like that because I couldn't put me. Uh, I've actually started to wear my hat normally, believe it or not, trying to get away from this tan. Evening, Dean. How's it going? So there's one ear look. Any of you guys coming in on Facebook, JP in the house, any of you guys like this on Facebook, just come out of this video, click on the link in the post, and then it'll give your Facebook permission to use your profile. And then I can see who I'm talking to, like these guys. Yes, Frank. Got loads of these as well. Go in, sending them out. Ah, you're by to Eric Gunderson. Ah, yes. I speak to Eric quite a bit. Not sure who that is, but hopefully they uh, they get uh, they come out of here and click on that link I said about. Hi, Callum, how's you? Hello, Jason, Mr. BSMA, how's it going? <laughs> so we're getting another well, schoolboy champion, British uh, motocross champion. I'm sure he won titles as well in the in the English Supercross as well. Not sure who that is. <laughs> Don't forget to try and click on that link. So hang on, let me see if I can see it on here. I can show you. Show you what I'm talking about. 
Um, okay, so it's not on that one. <laughs> there's me going. I'll show you. What, show you what it is. <laughs> sure, there's a link. There you go. So look. Hey, Mr. Payton. See, look, Mr. Payton can get it done. How's it going, buddy? So basically, look. Before you come into my ugly mug. You have to click this link in blue. Click that link where it says StreamYard.com Facebook. Leave a comment, look, please grant StreamYard permission. And then I'll be able to see your profile like that. And I can see who I'm talking to, otherwise it just comes up like Facebook user, look. It's a bit of a bummer then because I don't know who I'm talking to. So that's all you have to do is literally just come out of there, click on that link, and we are in business. Evening, Simon. How's you, buddy? Who is that? Hopefully you're going to get registered. Good, thanks, Lee. Sorting out live. Uh, yeah, I'm doing a live with uh, British Speedway icon, the man, Bruce Pennell, tomorrow night, 8 p.m. UK with the American legend. And then I'm doing uh, Enduro, uh, the former Enduro World Champion. Wow, now James Bond, Mr. Paul Edmondson. I'm doing on Monday night at 8 p.m. UK time. Tomorrow night I'm doing Bruce Pennell is 7 p.m. UK time. Hi Cliff, how's it going? All go good in the in the news crew. <laughs> All going well with the British Championship and everything. All good. A little bit of a break now to that, and into the last round at uh, Oxford, I believe. Hopefully, you can get that registered, whoever that is from Northamptonshire. Hope you're good. And uh, I'll get the man on in a minute, any minute now. So I did tell him to come on at ten past. Cause I said I'd get all this jargon out of the way. So I'll just say, like all you guys on Facebook, just click on that link, come out of this video, click on the blue link at the bottom of the post and then it'll give you permission so you can see like mr cliff musia so it's all going good for conrad it's been flying so all good in the hood get me a little promo video ready hopefully it'll be all good with the man he'll come into my bottom of my screen hello mr tmx man dick how's it going hope you're good not sure that is but evening hopefully you can uh, get your facebook clicked on as well just click on that link on the post before you come in the video you can come out of here click on the link come back in then i'll be able to see your profile like mr law here and i can see who i was talking good good mate what mark cross are you doing lately then bit of a gap to the british isn't it until the last round in oxford wouldn't mind getting the camera out again at the weekend. I can't believe I've broke my pod. <laughs> I broke it, literally snapped it as I got to grit and practice track. And I was like, oh my God, this is going to be hard work. Ah, I can see the man's coming to the screen. <laughs> we'll hear you as soon as I bring you in, buddy. Uh, right, let's get the video here. The man is here. So let's get going. Let's get the video going. Here we go. Beautiful. Right then. Hopefully it all works. Yep. Neil. Looks good. Hello there. You all right? How's it going? Yeah, good. Thank you. Hear us all good? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all good. Just um, back from America. So uh, a little bit jet lag still. Yeah. 
So that was uh, from from the weekend just gone, was it? Yeah, from Millville, and we did um, Southwick the week before. So um, it's kind of been a couple of days home now, and um, yeah, still feeling kind of weird times at the minute, really. Is that a good experience? How did it go? Is it all good? Uh, yeah, very good. Like um, Southwick, they kind of call it their deep sand track, but it it kind of is a little bit resembles hard underneath and then a little bit of top sand. Um, but it was good. Like, and then Millville was, yeah, another good. To, to be honest, them AMA rounds, are, they're something else. Like, I think if no one's experienced it, it's mm. pretty good to go there and actually see one or actually compete in one. It's quite a different experience, really. Yeah, I bet. I remember that uh, soundtrack watching all the AMA stuff. So is that like a little bit like Hawkstone now, where it obviously used to be really deep? Now it's just not. Uh, I'm not sure. Like the, um, it's kind of, um, it's kind of hard in spots. It's a little bit like a mm. um, little bit like Fat Cats. A little bit Fat Cats <laughs> has like a loose bit on top and then hard underneath. Um, I mean, they, they say it's the deepest soundtrack that you know they've ever kind of seen. Some of them where. So, yeah, you need to come to Lommel and you'll see something completely different to this place. Yes, yes, definitely. So it was all enjoyable then. Good, good uh, trip. But uh, obviously it's hard work. Yeah, the um, we had a we had um, uh, one thousand three hundred miles to drive back to Boston. So we're in Millville and we started driving at about six o'clock at six o'clock at night. And um, we, we got to where the truck stays in Boston at roughly 24 hours later. And the, the, the truck wasn't turned off until we got to Boston. So we, we drove through the night. Three of us did the driving. Um, me, my brother-in-law, James and uh, Charlie Putnam actually did a stint as well. So um, yeah, there's a lot of driving and um, yeah, it's surprising. You look at the your clock and it says 16 hours or whatever. And um, for some reason over there, the miles seem to drag on an awful lot. Um, but it, it's what it is. You've got to get there to get back, to get back on the flight, to get home. So it does take at least 10 days to get over the, the traveling when you come home. That's, that's a trouble. Everyone forgets it's so massive over there, isn't it? Everything's like mega. It's just not like being over here. <laughs> no. And, and Southwick, the heat was... Um, like 36 degrees or whatever like it was crazy like some of the riders were collapsing after the races and having ice baths to kind of recoup themselves you know and um so it's quite a quite a drain on you them them events with the with the heat and um the humidity is quite high there as well so just see uh another former rider there look chris mcmillan just come on saying hello princey hope you're well regards mate all right okay yeah, it's been a long time yeah Remember him on the old team Honda back in the schoolboy days? I'm sure it was, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, like 80, 88, 89, always racing yeah. against Chris. That's yeah. a few years ago now. Bless him, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's all like the Holmesy and all them days, I remember. That's it. That's it. See Mr. Payton's on tonight as well, so I'm not sure what he's going to come out with. <laughs> oh, he'll be trying to get rid of some of his um quality parts he makes. He's like very good at that stuff. Like making parts yeah, yeah, yeah. and old bikes yeah. and stuff. It's all that in Oxford really and he does all that. Yeah, that's it. Stuff. yeah, he's um he's on holiday, I think. He's gone away maybe somewhere near Bournemouth or something like that for the weekend. So oh, right, he's okay. uh, he's away with the family. So is Mr. Adam Lyons is on as well. All right, okay, yep. Yeah. My teammates this back in ninety eight on the TM. Yes, I've got a picture me of that. Mega character. Very good character, Adam is. This will be good. The truth, apparently, we're going to get Neil. <laughs> What's that, sorry? He says he's put, uh, this will be good. The truth he's put. <laughs> oh, right. Okay, yeah. I, I kind of do say it as it is. Well, it's only way you, it's only way you can do it. Like, like um, that, if you don't sell it as it is, it'll catch up with you one day, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris has put, I hope your foot is now okay. Yeah, that was Matcham's Park. I remember that. And I think he ran in the side of me and my dad had finished um, his shift at night and um, we left at something like, I don't know, like when he got home from his he worked shifts at night and we drove all the way to Matcham's and me and Chris come together in practice and literally one hour there we were driving back home. My mum wasn't too impressed with that, really. Oh, Jesus. That, that racing. Chris's fault, was it? <laughs> uh, we kind of come together in the corner, so I'm guessing that's what he's on about. So 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you uh, seen all that? Because it's still on, uh, I used to remember, I was a bit younger then as well, but I remember watching, still on YouTube now, of you guys all doing the, the match and sports, keep across, and uh, you on the Honda with the old MDS helmet and all that on. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and, and so I, I think I was one of the only ones to have the full face and helmet back in that day. And yep. um, I show it to my boy as much as I can just to show him I used to be an OK rider. So um, he, he <laughs> looks at it for like five seconds and puts on yeah, yeah. some yeah, of whatever. the yeah, YouTube whatever. stuff. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to go off to TikTok to watch Neville Bradshaw. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He loves watching Neville. Yeah, you just click onto that and just dump me. Talking about out. Neville Bradshaw. Talking about yeah. Bradshaw. Just put, can you let us in on some Farley Stark technique secrets, mate? <laughs> Well, <laughs> well, no. you know, it's quite interesting. Like I, I work with, obviously I've worked with a lot of riders and, um, mm -hmm. you know, the one thing to me is if you can find any advantage on the start, whether it's watch, if you can see the starter, it's their mistake for letting him be seen. Um, mm -hmm. And if the starter is smart, he will trick you and think he's double bluffing you. And um, <laughs> I think to me, a lot of riders, when they go to the start line, they haven't even watched the start from, the races before to see an advantage or some little extra bit of advantage you can get. So yeah, Farley, I just watched the guy as soon as he, he, he went down, I just dumped the clutch and they worked out a couple of times and a few times you run into the gate, but that's yeah. the chances you take really. Yeah. I think, I think all the speedway guys do that as well and see like what the referee, if he's doing anything, you know, a bit of a one, two, three or anything like that. I, I know I know Mike Brown. Um he he when he rode for us, he'd literally go to the start line, he'd look at every advantage and he would he would like literally count. So he would come back to the van and he wouldn't really say too much, but you can tell he's counted, say, the first two or three starts before him. And mm -hmm. if it went on to GPs, they were regularly the same second dropping. So he would just count the seconds and he would literally dump it. And um if you look at Mike's career, he whole shot a lot of races. And he also, in the cast days, hit the gate a few times as well. But, you know, like, it worked out more times than what it ended badly for him. So, yeah, fair play yeah, to yeah. him. And that's just getting every advantage you can, really. That always uh, went uh, well for you as well there as well, didn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. Yeah. I think that year I rode 125. I really wasn't that great that year. But um, oh, okay. it was all right. I probably got like that day on the Suzuki had probably like two good laps in me. And yeah, the <laughs> days of um, 20 minute motors are gone for me. That's for sure. Really. So it's, it's hard work now as well. <laughs> it is. It is. And um, it gets harder because obviously um, there's a lot of younger guys coming into it now. Um, yeah. So who are fitter and um, yeah, you just, yeah. They, it, if I ride now, if I can ride nowadays, it's just it's just have a bit of fun, really, and go home, really. That's the important thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How recent was that one then? Um... With the pit board. Yeah, can you see that? Can you see that bike there? Yep, that's uh, RMZ250. That is, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's probably something like 16, maybe, on the Suzuki. 16, uh, 17. Um Yes, a few years ago, Farley really was my last, um, when when I got some hole shots there watching the starter, that was the last yeah. time I kind of really rode, um, rode properly, like kind of properly, yeah. so. Yeah. So did you enjoy all that? Did you enjoy the Farley? Obviously, now you can see that the Dave and Doc and everything are doing the Fox Hill or anything. You've, have you ever been tempted into fancy back having a go at that or? Uh, <laughs> I probably I probably would ride. I, I like not many people know I, I I would I crashed and broke my shoulder and yeah. for sure some people are going, Oh, he's on about his shoulder again. I, I broke yeah. the the shoulder socket and yeah. um, so I have very limited movement in my left shoulder now. Uh, and um, I've just had another operation to kind of um get rid of the the bone spurs in there. And yeah. um like I, I literally can't lift my, my sh left shoulder above my head and I have no strength so my riding days are kind of ended there unless my shoulder gets better, but it's no, I'm 50 now and it's not, it's not getting better. And, um, so I kind of have to just be realistic and, um, yeah, like I've just got to knock it on the head a little bit, really. I can ride like a flat track if I wanted to, but not, not seriously, definitely not Fox Hills. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, hopefully we, one day we can get you to the reunion of ours and uh, if it's just like some demonstration laps with the lads and that would be good. Could do that oh yeah, no, no problem. I mean, the, the, mm. the biggest problem I have is um, we have very limited weekends off and then yeah. um, like my, my boy's racing now. So like the weekend, me and my wife will go to Doncaster Motor Park, ride with him at Kensworth Schoolboy Club. Um, mm. And then we weekend off and then we have um, MX Nationals and then that following Monday we, re we return to America for um, Unadilla, Buds Creek, and Ironman. And um, so I'm going to miss Fox Hills, which is a little bit upsetting because obviously um, uh, Bobby's going to ride um, and uh, Yoshi Azuta is um, coming over, my Japanese friend. That's and um, yeah, that's time with him is always good to have. So um, that's a shame, isn't it? Yeah. So it's, it's the, just the way it goes. So that, you know, I'll make sure. Or me and JP will make sure they're ready for it. And then, yeah, hopefully they go all right. They enjoy themselves. That's the main thing, really. <laughs> Mr. Payton, is that a number one plate on the wall behind you? <laughs> uh, maybe. Yeah, it is Brad Anderson's, Brad Anderson's actually. I'm very, <laughs> I'm, I'm very lucky because my, my boy's quite shy. So I end up asking for most of the number plates, and my wife does. And oh, then right, get yeah. them signed. So, yeah. like, I got some good ones this weekend in. Um, in uh millville um so yeah we just collect as much as we can really he he likes it so yeah not sure who that is i might try and find out who that is he said that i gotta go onto my facebook to look <laughs> he's but he's still fast for two laps oh yeah <laughs> right, yeah two laps. well i i did ride um a couple of years ago at cusses after my shoulder i had a i had a big yep. crack at cusses and broke my neck in four places and oh, yeah. um, which were stable fractures but I, I don't really know why I crashed. And um, it's because uh, my shoulder kind of gives way. So that kind of also, you know, now I think back, I have no idea why I was even bothering to have a go. Um, so, yeah, it comes to a time when you think you really need to be more healthy instead of hitting the floor, really. I think that was uh, Gary Pottinger. All right. OK. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, not many people know this. He's he's quite a, a rough-looking character. Like, not rough as in rough. He's just got a beard and everything. He is, when I was a kid riding, um, there's a track by my mum and dad's called Acrovi. And um, Gary used to have a bike shop called GP Motocross. And um, honestly, there was a track at Acrovi. I don't think I ever saw anyone go as fast as him around there. Um, and... Yeah, like he's up up that way. Gary, not many people know, he was pretty good in that area. Like Nantwich area, he could win a lot of races up there. He'll be hating me talking about like that about him. So, yeah, that's shut him right up probably. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, uh, hi, Lee. How's it going, mate? Lee Williams as well. He's put, is that JP's plate from Canada Heights in 99? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's JP's plate. <laughs> day and uh yeah he did tremendous that day fair play to him he, he spanked them all that day as well in the mud as well yeah 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 that was uh he was on the suzuki wasn't he? i'm sure he was he was yeah animal suzuki yeah. and um he's very talented james like um because mm. obviously he's probably the best friend that i've had and um he is very talented on a bike just he had a lot of injuries which i think now uh with injuries obviously my shoulder injury um I, I've been quite fortunate in my career not to have many injuries, um, which have uh, kind of damaged the, the the movements of the arms or the legs and stuff. And um, this injury here, I think if a you know, rider nowadays has it, you know, you have lots of riders who have lots of big injuries. Like James had quite a big shoulder injury, knee, knee injury. I think yeah. when you, it kind of, I think it takes a little bit of your racing spirit out of you when you have injury after injury. And I think... Um, I was fortunate not to have too many big ones, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh, it takes a bit of coming coming, coming back from them nowadays. Yes, yeah, it takes a while, doesn't it? And then you've got to get the race fitness back and all that again. So it's like a hard process, but everyone else, everyone else is up to speed. So it's always yeah. difficult. Yeah, yeah, very much. Um, Simon Howes here. Hi, Simon. He's put, evening, Neil. Have you still got the Cat Honda kit I sent you? Such a nice guy. Uh, yes, I have. Yes, that's in my um, that's in my bedroom. Yeah, that won't go anywhere. Like I, whatever I've got, I keep hold of. My wife probably maybe doesn't like it because I keep lots of rubbish about. 
but I'm yeah. I'm a bit of a hoarder. So like I kind of say if 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 I'm if she's better off getting rid of the stuff so I don't see it gone, then I don't really see it missing. But um for sure she wouldn't be throwing any shirts away, that's for sure, really. I say, uh, does that mean we have to come and have a ruffle around your place with memorabilia? <laughs> yeah, I've got a few bits, but um it's I think a lot of a lot of riders have, have nothing left from their racing days. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, I do like hang, I, I like to hang on to that stuff. I can't forget yeah. their days. That, that's yeah. for sure, really. Yeah. yeah, that's a nice time as well. Oh, you did ring me actually before this interview, which I'm going to ask you in a second. <laughs> yep. Mr. Hansen, look, he says, uh, team says hello from the ferry. Oh, yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> they're going to Lommel this weekend. So um, yeah. I've kind of ditched them this weekend. For my boy, which is obviously, you know, I, I, I want to try and I enjoy watching my boy ride um, and yeah. um, them boys. So Greg's looking after Sh uh, Mirror Shivenon this weekend and James, my brother-in-law, he's looking after um, Tarviku this weekend in MX2. Okay. So yeah. um, I will be keeping eye on their lap times and hopefully they're twisting it all weekend, them boys. Yeah. So even when you're away, you're keeping an eye on it. That's good. So Mr. Hansen said to me. Yep. Uh, he said, can you ask uh, Neil, yep. how was it winning the British Championship? <laughs> so I don't uh, know what he's doing. It, it was pretty, like, um, it was good. Like, it would, no, it was, it, was a, it was a good moment in my racing career, obviously, because um, it goes with you for a long time. And Greg was quite a big competitor that year. Like, he broke his wrist at Fox Hills, um, I think in practice or the first race. So that would kind of rule Greg out for the year. Um, but I had a few DNFs that year as well, which kind of, and a few other people had DNFs. So it kind of fetched it like Fox Hills. I won every race that day, which was three races on the day. And that yeah. kind of put me in a position of where I think I went there maybe fifth in the championship and come out leading the championship. Yeah. And then it kind of went my way till the end of the year then really. Um but it was good. I can't miss them days. It's it's kind of hard to remember them days. I never mm. forget <laughs> when I won the British Championship. I thought oh, I'm going to get I'm going to get a little bit of money now, and I mm. think I just got like a, a plaque from a wall, which which my wife has put in the bedroom in our spare room. Um, so yeah, it's just yeah, them days um, was very different racing them days, and um, it's something I can obviously I've done, um, which is something good to have really. Yeah. I hope that's not what Greg's getting at. That he thinks that uh, he would have won it. <laughs> he he, say, he says that all the time to me. But like I said to him, I've got the trophy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, you had one. You had a one two five. Well, anyway, Greg. So I mean, sharing he it. Yeah, you had one in uh, earlier, uh, would it? Quite a bit yeah, earlier. Quite a few years before that, I think it was 87, 88. I don't know what what that was, but he has definitely told me. He has told you'd, me. Have been the, you'd have been in the schoolboys, haven't you? Uh, yeah, it would have been, yeah. Yeah, because I think Greg is, I'm thinking, uh, seven or eight years older than me, I think, something like that. But he was a good, good competitor in the day. Like, I never forget him on the Patrick track or mm. place that on the KX500. Like, he could beat That's anyone. Yeah, and, I, yeah. and I think he was the only guy one year to beat Dave Thorpe at a British Championship brand, if I remember. Yeah, he was. I remember that, yeah. When Dave was top of his game, so um, yes. fair play to Greg, really. Yeah, classy rider. Definitely yeah. always love to watch uh, Greg. Definitely. Yeah. Very much Still, uh, when he came down to my reunion, he didn't hang around then either. He's supposed to be like demo laps, but he went off like a rocket. <laughs> yeah, you know he will. Yeah, he. Um, it was funny because um, uh, we we had a um, we had the riders out at a place called Flackwell. And there's yeah. quite a big double jump there, and literally Greg had bought a Husqvarna. It's a, he thought it was a 16 model, but it's a 14, which is kind of, it'll be, it'll be still thinking about that on the ferry right now. And um, he, he, he just went around the track, literally didn't check, didn't check nothing. Like just put the fuel in the tank and just went off. And I thought, God, I'd be checking a few bits over and he yeah. still got that, you know, just get on the bike and get going really. Brilliant. Proper legend. Love Greg. Yeah, definitely. So he's, uh, so in case anyone don't know, uh, yeah. What have you what have you been up to since your racing days? Then, if anyone that doesn't know, uh, I mean, I was fortunate that um, I bumped into, or I didn't bump into him. Like um, me and Adam Lyons were on um, TM in '98, and then Adam went to Cass Honda the year the year later, 
And um, basically, we both went to Cassandra in 99 to race. Yeah. And um, I think it was the first time I really kind of got a deal of where I got um, diesel paid for, entries paid for. I had a really, to me, it was the best deal I could have that year. And it was a good deal. And yeah. um, when I started that deal, I I come strong back to America. And then I had my meniscus when I'm a knee, so I had to have that operated on. So... I was really kind of slow going that year, but at the end of the year, it kind of come 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 better. Like I nearly won an MX1 race at um, Haverton Hall, but my bike blew up on the very last lap when I had a 20 second lead over Paul Malin, and um, so that kind of cost me. But I, I proved that I could actually could have you know could have done well that day, and. Yeah. Um, that was for me quite satisfying, even though I didn't cross the finish line. I kind of thought, you know, I had a control here at Nantwich, Haverton Hall. And um, the year after, uh, Harry Ainsworth kind of said, look, like, why don't you do racing and try and manage the team a little bit or, or get into that side of it? And it, it started from there with the Cass Honda team. And then um, that kind of up, kind of just moved on from there, went to team manager, um, obviously, uh, Josh Coppins won a Grand Prix. I think that's Sun City. Um, so we had some good results along the way, obviously, and um, good memories. And yep. Cass, for me, was 11 years of um, of in Cass Honda. Um, mm -hmm. Just unfortunate that, um, you know, with sponsors and, you know, the the, the rider salaries and everything getting bigger, the, the team just folded the end of 2010. And then, um, then I moved on with Pa Honda, Heads and Fred Suzuki, Lombard Express Suzuki. But when I did Lombard Express, I was actually truck driving full time as well. Um, yeah. And it was just I had no plan on running the team other than, but you know, Bob Chef's one of one of my really good friends. What we yeah, are one of my best friends, and um, he rang and HRC had, had dropped him that next year and had nothing to do. Mm -hmm. So I went to Suzuki and said, "Look, I can I can run Bob Chef in the British Championship if you want. Like I can do it if you give me some budget." Um, I can do the eight weekends, can make it happen. I wanted to make it happen for Bobby. So yeah. I was working full time and doing him at the British Championship. And um, that turned out fantastic. I mean, we we're very fortunate that Jake Nichols, uh, not fortunate, Jake Nichols got injured before the last round. We had a 34 deficit because it, if he hadn't got injured, we'd, we'd have never won that championship. Yeah. Um, so uh, that happened to where we got the championship. And um, kind of then I was kind of back to truck driving again um, and yeah like I got the call to look after uh, Joel, Joel Rizzi and um, yeah. I've never looked back since then really with um, with um, uh, with Clinton and Norman Norm. Yeah. So you're in, enjoying everything now then? Everything going well? Yeah very good yeah yeah like I'm in a good place um I mean, everyone keeps telling me I look stressed all the time, but I've kind of, I'm trying to run the riders the best I can, run the team the best I can, uh, get the team to America the best I can. Um, and we're just fortunate that we've got good sponsors making it happen um, because I think lots of riders would jump at the chance to go America and race. And, yeah. you know, like running the guys in the week takes time. It's, yeah. it's a it's a full time job, um, but no, I love it. Like uh, got good pe good people around me, um, and you feel very supportive by the people who work in the team as well. So that way, it's it's very good. Looks a, looks a really quality setup. Obviously, I've seen it coming to the British Championship to do the commentary. Looks a, an amazing setup. Uh, really good. I can I've been there and seen you guys getting it all up and all back down again and all that. It's all hard work. People don't see behind the scenes. It's not. Uh, and they see it all up looking glamorous later on. <laughs> well, it, it, it was interesting because um, uh, we um, I got asked to look after Justin Bogle at C Cardiff Supercross. And yep. um, I got on with him, I think, quite well. And then he asked if I could look after him in Birmingham when he comes to Birmingham. Yep. And uh, so I said, yeah, no problem. Then the dates changed and the dates come out. And it was the same day as Schoolhouse, the British Championship. So... I thought, God, it's going to be busy. We go to America on the on the Tuesday after schoolhouse, and then got to look after Bogle Saturday in Birmingham, schoolhouse Sunday, Tuesday leave for America. So we did that job, and Greg actually, Greg and Ian drove the truck to um, to uh, schoolhouse, and 
they're all they're all technical the bikes and um me and james uh worked at the supercross i looked after bogle he did the mechanics area so we drove up we got to school house two o'clock in the morning i think and um we kind of said we'd have no easy ups be, uh, we'd have easy ups but no warning okay. and uh, we were parked at the back of the track but in the middle of the area and um the wind was really bad and on saturday the easy up got broken and, and broke the easy up so we had no easy ups either so we got there and I, i'm kind of a big believer in get the job done and get home, you know, like do the best we can and go home. Yeah. So it was, it, we had the stands out with the, with the mats and stuff and all the bikes. And to me, the, um, how many people come around our awning to look, not come around our truck to see us working that weekend. It was as if they could inter interact much more with no awning at all. Uh, I know that sounds a little bit crazy, but um, I must have had 10 people ask me, how, how do you get all them bikes in the back of that racetrack? You know, and I've never been asked that question ever. Then they were like, oh, it's really nice to be close up to the bikes. I mean, some people were really too close, but it was actually <laughs> quite nice to see a lot of different people interacting with the with the truck being open, um, mm -hmm. which sometimes you miss that. Like, I like people mm -hmm. coming around looking and seeing what's yeah. going on because, you know, they some people think you just turn up get the bikes out, do the job and go home where there's much more than that. You've got to check it over, do the chain. Um, they see everything that goes on. And I think at Schoolhouse, I did see a little bit of a different part of people actually being able to see yeah, exactly what goes on at close quarters, really. That was interesting for everyone. I, mean, I didn't go to that one, but I did hear it was windy and a few things and tents and awnings were going a bit. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Um, it was windy like the... Um, they fastened the easy up down to the feet and it actually snapped the feet off the easy up and just took the legs off. So it just literally, the wind must've been that powerful to, to do that job, but you're kind of on top of a mountain. So yeah. the wind literally come across and just hit, hit the awning, the, the easy up straight away underneath really. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Adam's stressed. He goes, there's not a gray hair on your head. <laughs> I use back to back to black. That's how I do that. No, I'm just someone, I don't. Someone strangely went just for men. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm um, yeah, I'm quite lucky there because my brother's completely great, and um, yeah, he's really great. So he must have much. And he's a postman, so he must have much more stress for me going on. I'm sure. I'm sure I'll make James really ill, but you don't look any older at all. No, 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 no. He's um, he keeps himself healthy. He's doing um, electric mountain biking at the minute. So fair play, fair play. Uh, got uh, Bat Dad here. How you going, buddy? Uh, has Neil still got the 1985 Diva 125 he had off me a few years back? Yeah, of course. That's in the garage. I had that nice. in lockdown. I actually yep. paint, painted the frame. Um, well, did the old school paint job where you kind of mask off the frame, painted it, um, yep. put some tires on it, like got some stickers for it. And me and Chad got that running about four weeks ago. And it pretty yep. much fired up second kick. Um, it. Yeah, it's a nice bike that. that it's, it's, there's certain bikes in eras. Like when I rode Honda in 87, 87, mm. I think, kind of, I was on a Honda, but the Kajiva bike just seemed a very special bike in them days. Um, mm. Working on it, it looks very fragile. Like, um, I mean, it runs and starts fine, but. It just looks fragile, um, which I think they were back in the day where the Honda was a solid, solid 125. Um, mm. But the Kajiva, just, it just appeals to my eye, really. So when I saw it, I kind of had to have it. And um, yeah, it's in my garage. It stays there, really. Nice. I'm sure, didn't James Dobb have one uh, in the 80s? Uh, I, I think he did, maybe 86, maybe. Um, yeah. I know Craig Prattley rode one, and I'm sure it was 86. And I'm sure when the Kajiba went to the white model, it didn't have the same kind of engine or or power output as what the red one had. I remember yeah. that quite weird because they came out with the white one thinking, oh, this is going to be good. And it wasn't as good as the old old red bike, if I remember. Interesting. I've got Gav Richmond here. Hey, Gav. Did you ride the Birmingham Supercross in 92, 93? Uh, and what number were you? I have lots of photos. Uh, yes, I did. Uh, 91, that's the year Rick Johnson was there, I think. Um, yeah. I did go 
I dislocated my arm the first night, which I think knocked me out. But I think I dislocated it in either a semi or possibly the last chance. I can't remember. I remember getting cheered as they as they dragged me out of there. Um, 92, I did. I was on a Suzuki. And the number was... Oh, that's a good... I've, that's on YouTube at the minute. Um, I can't remember the number. But I was on a Suzuki. Definitely on a Suzuki. Definitely there in 92. Is this the picture I found of you on the Suzuki? I think this is the right picture of you. But I found this one. Was that? Yeah, that I think that is Blacks or Pits, maybe. Mm. It, I could have been 22 at the Supercross, but I'm thinking it was 30, 30 something like that, if you know what I mean. Mm. What was that bike like? Uh, that was all right. Yeah, they were, they were good. Like um, Suzuki was a good bike the 125 i remember andrew bell built the engine on that and um mm -hmm. that was a pretty good bike in them days like that could do the job but i was always better on the 125 like i could i could have top fives on that um against obviously robbie herring dobby was in there like dobby i think was better on a on a 250 in the british from what he was on the 125 or maybe the bike wasn't as strong the 125 um but the 250 i'd be round about eighth ninth or tenth maybe and then the one two five i was i was always kind of in the top five roughly um and also you know i was only chatting to someone the other day we did a race at marlow which is near high wickham near our workshop and um yeah. i never forget it because on some of the pictures you've put up there, there's one at marlow mm -hmm. and um i never forget the, it, we blew up in practice the piston ring seized in in the piston in practice and mm -hmm. Then you had the 250 125 race on the four races the same day. Yeah. And um, I never forget me and my dad, we we got the got the cylinder off, got the piston ring out, we're filing the piston, the piston so the ring had moved back together. And I'm sure that day I was on the podium or second that day at Marlow. Yeah. And I thought, God, if if you walked around a truck now or a van, you saw someone filing and freeing the piston off, you'd think. Jesus. They were crazy, do you know what I mean? And yeah. them days were very different to what they are now. That's, yeah, that's for old sure. School, old school, yeah, old school there. Yeah. Did you know old. that's that's a question I got forever down, but I'll ask it now while we're talking about it. Did you yeah. um did you on from the two strokes, did you prefer the best race in the one two five or the two fifty or the five hundred? What did you enjoy the two strokes the best? Which one? To be honest. I liked the 125 and then mm -hmm. the 250, I only really had, you know, like Haverton Hall when, when the bike blew up on the, you know, I had, I blew up and I think I was fourth in the second race and I was third or fourth. And if I'd finished the first race, I'd, I'd have took the overall that day. I remember it quite well. That was yep. probably the only day I kind of had a really good day on the, on the 250. So the 250 really, I never kind of, you know, like um, never really, got on with that really well but when i got on the cr500 i love that bike i could i think i missed qualifying only one time on that bike when i when i did a gp on it um yeah. and like i had a good ride at hawkstown park gp run out of fuel the very last lap of the race in eighth place which oh, kind yeah. of didn't go down very well um no no, no one's fault just i yeah. couldn't stop with finishing that um yeah, but, yeah. The 500, I did like that bike. That suited me, I think, better out of all the two strokes. Um, and it's just a good bike. You know, you know what I mean? Like, even to now, if you ride a CR500, it blows you away how much power the thing's got, really. Yeah, yeah. Got some cool photos uh, from a bit further back. That's, yeah, that, uh, I think that's a Marlow there as well, I think. That's a nice track, actually. I see that's Mr. Bates. I actually showed uh, Matt Bates that the other day as well. Just... Yeah. Yeah, some good old pictures there. Yes, love them days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they're um, it's very different now. Like, I I think it'd be interesting if they did formats like the 250, 125 were in them days. Cause I think it was, um, it was a kind of different star racing and um, you had to adapt to you know, you, you'd have, like nowadays, guys want to have a lot of hours on bikes, where them days you'd have your 125 literally ready to go, you'd have your 250 ready to go, and you'd kind of swap in the day, which mm. was quite interesting how people adapted. And um, 
I think people like you know Robbie Herring, uh, Paul Cooper, uh, Jeremy Watley, people like that, they they could be quick on all for all all two of them bikes in the day on all four races. So it yeah. was quite competitive them days, really. Yeah, I remember watching all the Motorvision tapes back then and watching all that. It was really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good old days. Still catching them all on the YouTube and all that now. Still, I've got on a like time walk back all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was, Honda, what was this Honda like, Neil? What was that Honda like? Very, very good. Um, I mean, to be honest, the Honda back in, you know, I, I so I got, I got, a D, I was riding a Yamaha in '87, and yeah. um, I never forget it. We were in a Yamaha and we did the schoolboy qualifier in Canuck, and um, I knew Steve McMillan. I knew Steve quite well, and his dad. Yeah. Bob McMillan was the Honda Honda boss in them days, yeah, yeah. and um, he said, "Oh, with you know." I don't know what he said to my dad, but he basically we got a call in the week from from Honda, and I think it might have been um, uh, Tim Styles, maybe at the time. Maybe I'm just thinking Tim Styles called my dad and said, "Look, um, we want to get you on a Honda," and we obviously paid for our Yamahas up till then. And I never forget my dad asked him twice on the phone, "What did you just say?" And um, I was thinking, "Oh, what's what's he saying, Dad?" And he basically said, "There's two bikes at Chiswick in Honda." If you come collect them, you can use them for the year. And that for us was like, that. it was hard to believe what was said. Yeah, yeah. And um, I never forget, we literally loaded the van or got in the van, drove, and we stopped at the services before Milton Keynes on the M1, which I don't know the yeah. name of it, but it's quite not far from my house now. And I've been, and I never forget going in them services, looking at the motorway, thinking we'd traveled maybe four hours or something to get there already and on the way to Chiswick. And it yeah. was something I've never really ever forgotten every time I passed them services and basically went there, Chiswick, found found the bikes, got given two bikes, and then 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, up to 92, I was on Honda. And really, mm. to me, they, they were the bikes to be on in them days, really. Like, they were strong. You know, you could do 100 as hours on an 89. I, I remember I had two in 89. And I rode them as a schoolboy kid, hours mm -hmm. and hours and hours. I mean, they they were hanging by the end of the year, but um, they they did the job. Yeah, I used to love, like I said, I love that coverage of the match and view on that one two five Honda that MDS on it. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah, no, the yeah, that was a, yeah, that was good, good days. That was very yeah, good days. Really, really good. I've just got a few comments coming in. Here's the man. Oh, see. Yeah. Here he is. Is the yeah, legend himself. The best team manager I could wish, look, with a love heart. Check that out. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice of him, Matt. What, what's he after? <laughs> oh, no, he's, 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 he was a rider who yep. basically give you everything on the day. Like, he give you 110%. And um, I was only having that conversation today with some people because they obviously ask about riders. And, um, yeah. you know, like, you'll, you'll give everything to a rider that gives you 110%. And if that 110% is 15th place in the race, that's, that's all you want from the guy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and I've always explained that to riders when riders, if they give you everything and it's 10th or it's 20th place, I'm happy with that. It's when you don't get the commitment you, you put in, or you can tell they're not up to where they need to be. You struggle with, yeah. but, yeah. um, Nearly every rider I've worked with uh, give you a hundred percent, really, which is all you can ask for, really. Yeah, totally get that. Totally get that. <laughs> oh, James said you've never rode a one two five in your life, a one four five minimum. <laughs> yeah, I think I think me and Greg, we all had, always had the big balls. <laughs> Greg, yeah, yeah. That. <laughs> oh, oh, I remember yeah. in the nineties having like two fifty carburetors and all sorts of one two five. They used to go like. But uh, yeah, there's uh, there's some nicely tuned uh, one two fives out there for sure, wouldn't they? Back in the day. <laughs> but but I think in them days, I think um, like if you go back eighty nine, ninety, and stuff like that, I think the like you never really went into tuning like you do now. Like um, you know, like like if you look at some of the bikes now, say at um, that are going to be at Farley Castle, say for instance, the yeah. um, you know the one two fives there, you you see like how much money's put into them. I think in 89 or 90, 91, I mean, me and my dad, we were popping the rings out and filing the ring gap. So the piston had literally, the piston ring would move in the piston because it had seized up. 
you know, and back in them days, you know, there wasn't so many places to get it plated. You know, it was quite, um, quite different them days. I think people wouldn't understand that, you know, like you, you'd have a one, two, five ready to do a British championship race and you'd make it as new as possible. But the tuning side of it was completely different to what you can get now to make, make bikes good. You get ignitions, you can get good pipes, um, silencers. It's endless now. And I'd, I'd, I'd hate to think what some people have got into their, their 89s, their 91s bikes now is quite, quite scary. How much money can be spent on them and how much horsepower you can get out to what we had back in them days, really. Mm. Yeah, I've seen some of them, even our reunions, we've had Evo and Super Evo 125s, Jesus Christ. <laughs> even yeah. at Cunningham, it's like rough and that, and they are like, yeah, them it's, the it's, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's endless what they can do to them now. And I think technology has just moved on quite a lot. And, yes. um, you know, you ride, you know, you ride like a um, Husqvarna 125 now, 20, 22, 23 bike. And then you ride that, and you, then you get on an 89 bike and you think, my good God, the difference, you know, the technology has come so far. Mm. And I think it's the same with with even the riders nowadays. I mean, um, you know, if you go back to say, you know, it'd be so interesting or so if you could go back in time and say, right, OK, you've got um, uh, Graham Noyce on his best day and you've got, um, let's say, Tim Geyser on his best day and put them together i think it would actually be quite scary the level of the riders the level of the bike how much and how fit the guys have to be nowadays to to put the bike around the track and the level of fitness they have to be is something else nowadays you know if they're if they're top top flight riders def, definitely yeah 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 definitely i don't think they have some of the haywire nights that some of them guys used to back then yeah, I think. Oh no, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. It just, you know, <clears throat> like I think even when I was racing 2000, 2001, like um, I don't think I was ever fit enough, you know, or or not fit enough. I would say the, you know, you'd go running, say forty minutes to an hour. Um, I'll just say probably wasn't me for comments come up, but if you went running for forty minutes now, you know, you've got our guys like. Tarviku and um, Charlie Putnam, you know, they're running twice a day sometimes because they're not being able to ride. So it shows you the amount of effort they, they're putting in where I think in my racing days, I never ran twice a day ever, yeah. you know, and, um, and you know, there's just the, the fitness level is and the nutrition and what you eat and what you put in is, is quite a big part of a lot of racing now. Like they've got to be fit enough to get on that bike to do the job and, I think a lot of people still nowadays don't realize the commitment the top riders put into their diet, their eating, their training, their the whole the whole part of it is it all comes as a package really. That's nice as well. He's put uh, Prince. You always give hundred and ten percent too. Oh yeah, that's nice. Well, I do try. I do. I do try. I mean, um, you, you've got to do nowadays because. Um, you know, like uh, we we had Bobby Bob Bobrashev coming back, obviously this year, and you know, like um, he he's another guy who gives you everything he's got, and uh, you know he's he's been off racing for nearly a year and a half or nearly two years of, you know, and he got to a point in his life depressed and can't ride and can't race, and you know, I rang him up literally a week before Preston and said, look, I've got your license back, I've, you can ride the UK Championship. And he was like, right, I'm there. And he traveled something like 20 hours of flying to get here, yeah. got on the bike, did one day and went straight to Preston Docks to do the Bridgestone. Yeah. You know, and the commitment, like you, someone like that, you obviously have got to give back. And UC was very similar. You know, I, I saw UC um, break both his wrists in Austrian GP, 250 GP. And um, he did it in practice, went to the hospital and he had... Um, multiple hairline fractures in both his wrists and um he asked for i think it was cortisone injections he put into his wrist in and he basically duct tape his wrists up and um uc style i'm going to start the race if i can't do it i'll pull in but if i can do it i'm going to keep going and i think he committed to the start committed to the first jump landed obviously too much pain and then obviously called it a day but 
to go out and actually do that shows the strength he's got inside of him. And um, yeah, he, yeah, he's a tough old, tough old character. He is. I remember him. He was uh, definitely a fierce competitor, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Yeah, he could. He could. I think he broke his ankle as well in Checo, clipped the bank in Checo, and um, he literally did the whole day with it. Never took his boot off all day, and he he was on the podium, I think, in the MX3 class or the I think it was MX3 that day it was called. So that shows you like how much heart that that kid's got, really. Uh, I'm not sure this is, but this must be a Welsh rider because I can't see his name. But he's put, "Who's your favourite Welsh rider, Mister Prince?" <laughs> oh, it's got to be. Oh, that's interesting. They put their name to that. It could be Mark Jones. Could be who? Could it be? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go. I'll go Gary Pottinger. I'll go Gary Pottinger. Okay. Uh, he definitely I'm opened sure. my eyes as like a sixteen-year-old kid when I watched him acrobat ride. In any case, so. <laughs> Hopefully, he's in then. So hopefully, they'll let know who that was. My, 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 my friend Jem Richards, he asked me, I've got to give him a plug tonight. He was he was oh, close to him behind, a little bit close to him. So all right, okay. I uh, got uh, <laughs> Peyton said he couldn't run a bath. <laughs> Who's that? Who potted you? No, Peyton's just put uh, he goes, NP couldn't run a bath. <laughs> when we were talking about running, I gather he wrote that. Oh yeah, probably, yeah, bloody hell. Uh, he, uh, JP always went running with me. Ask him that one. He never went running too much, did you, JP? Was <laughs> <laughs> it stuff at the pub? He's put, he's put actually. What was your best year in motocross to date? Um, <sighs> Not in it. Gotta be my boy. Just got um, position three at MX Nationals at the last round at um, uh, Oxford Motor mm -hmm. Park. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, Brilliant. so he, he was position three there. He, he got lucky, like Arthur Moore, who I used to race against his dad back in the day. His, uh, yeah. I think his boy had a breakdown. There was only four in the race, but you got to be in it to get it. So he got the P3 trophy. So it's in the house. Um, yeah, yeah. Just continuing on then. Yeah, yeah. Good to see, good to see. Fair play. That would made, made you proper proud then of that, to see that as well. Must have been pretty cool. Yeah, no, it's uh, well. I watched it on live stream because um, I was in America, so uh, I had to wake up early to watch the live stream. Like we, we got we had near uh, Charlie saw an Airbnb, so um, I'm really not very good with technology. Like I've done well even getting on this tonight, and then um, so I had to click on the TV, connect it to my Wi-Fi, get it on. I was quite proud of myself, and then I literally got in just in time to watch his racing. So. When them boys were sleeping, I was like, I was knackered in the afternoon because obviously I got up early to watch that. We'd yeah. done a lot of traveling, so um, it was worth getting up for, really. Yeah, yeah that was a nice bit. So that must have been cool. Proud dad moment and all that. That must have been good. Um, yeah, but his, his moments kind of over override mine a little bit. I mean, I've had, I've had, yeah. you know, when I won the British Championship, my dad was there. That that was, my I think my mum was there as well. Um, yeah. So that was that was a good day, but. Yeah. you know what it's like you kind of forget them days you have to see pictures to remember and um my dad give us some pictures of hawkstone park when i won the championship and god it's hard to remember them days you remember some weird stuff but yeah th them days kind of they've been putting the files somewhere in the back of my brain somewhere <laughs> but you've been doing so much since i'm not surprised <laughs> Hawk Hawkstone would have been good when I went, you know, when when I ran out of fuel. Like if, I, but I also knew what I did did in that race, and I think if you know in your if you know what you did that day, and how it could have ended, you it kind of you know, yeah. If I'd crossed the line, it probably didn't change how I felt inside. I had a good ride. Um, I had a good race with Puzar pretty much the whole race in that race, and Eves Demaria. So to me, that was a that was a high high point in my career, really. So um, yeah, I've got good memories. I you know watching my boy ride is yeah that's that's better than all of them, really. Very special. Um, Travis here has just put uh, hi Neil. Do you remember evening motocross in rider mid Wales? I'm sure he does. I think yep. it was 2000. Hucklebridge, Prattley, Crockard was racing as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were good. They, they were good days. They were. I, I never forget. Mm -hmm. um, one story I'll tell is um, we did. Gordon won the Grand Prix on Cassandra at um, uh, Talavera Garena, yes. and I never forget it. So he flew home, and I was on the CR500, I think, and 
we did the first race and I think I finished, uh, I mean, Gordy will tell me if I'm wrong, if, he, if I see him, but I'm sure I finished, say, fourth in the race and Crockard finished sixth or seventh in the race. I never forget coming back to the truck and he, he was sat on the truck and I was like, right, Gordy, like I told you, it's a bit of a, because I think the gate dropped before he'd even got his goggles on. And um, he said, I can't believe it. I won the Grand Prix the weekend. And then some guy called Sean Grosvenor has absolutely just spanked us all. <laughs> and, you know, like Gary Davis, um, yeah. Sean Grosvenor, them mm -hmm. boys around there, they, yeah. they could rip around there at night. You know, they, they'd, they'd beat lots of people there. And um, they were good times. You know, the, you, you, you miss them times. Like, I see they had another event this year. And um, yeah, it's good right, if yeah. it takes off again. You know, we need mm -hmm. them events. They've got to come back, yeah. really. I think they had a big crowd as well, uh, Neil. So it did look good. I didn't go, but it looked good. Yeah, no, that's mega. That that's that's mm. that's what we need. You know, what I, mean? I think, you know, we've had a few hiccups in the British Championship this year, um, but I think on certain events it's been very popular with people there. And um, I think if it's grasped at the right moment, um, something can. You know, to me, I've not seen some events have been very good with the people coming there, and um, I think. That's positive. Um, the arena cross, um, which was the start of the year, was was many people were there, um, and there was I think twenty thousand at the World Supercross in in Birmingham, which doesn't sound a lot, but mm -hmm. as you know and other people know, I was kind of not expecting maybe that many there because obviously the British was on, the the super bikes are on. I think it's I think there does need to be where people sit down and go actually. On these big events, they shouldn't run any other events. That's yeah. important. I think um, if they yeah. can do that, that could yeah. be a positive move for everybody, really. Definitely, yeah, yeah, definitely. You're right. There's been a few in it, silly little ones that have been clashing. Yeah, so, yeah. And, and if they can get around that, it could mm -hmm. be good, you know. And um, the World Supercross, the 20,000 there, I thought was a good number of people to turn up, really. Very good. Yeah, definitely. It was really good. Uh, he's just put as well there, look, he's put, he was a team manager, but he rode with us every now and then. And it was a shame for me as his speed was pretty close to mine. <laughs> oh, well, it was quite funny because um, I rode the, the four-stroke Honda 450 the, for Honda the very first time in Birm Birmingham Supercross. Yeah. And um, there was only one in the country and they let me race it in the race. And Hocklebridge was in the race, UC was in the race, and I was in the race. And um, UC remember this quite well. So. I was winning the race till the very last lap on the four stroke and um, I crashed and Hucklebridge and UC got me, but I, I like, I, I couldn't pick it up quick enough and I didn't have a good enough lead to, to pick it up either. So, but I think I would have, he'll say different, but he'll say that. So they, we got interviewed in the truck afterwards. and um, I was in there thinking, God, why did I have to crash? And UC got it gets interviewed and goes, um, I knew he was going to crash like that. And I thought, Jesus, I was like, I was raging nearly. You never knew that. And it, it, I'm sure he won, him or Hucklebridge won the race, but I was like, God, what a wally. Because you always rode, uh, wow, didn't, did you win any titles in the Supercross, all that UK stuff and all that? Because I know you were always up there. I tell everyone this. Um, I think maybe four times I won the championship, like, the future west championship and um, yeah, yeah. so and i won i think some of matt's events on i think one night i won in birmingham so i i enjoyed i enjoyed the the soup the, the arena cross um and it yeah i kind of i i did okay at it i i enjoyed i enjoyed that like i enjoyed going to belfast they had a good round there birmingham was good to be honest i enjoyed all them events anything that is pushing it forward and is interesting I'm, I'm i'm always up for that like big time because they had some title tracks in there i remember i went to watch one of the uh, exeter as well wasn't there there was a super cross now i think i don't know if you wrote that one yeah i won there in yeah. I, in 99 i come back from america so. and um no. i won there and then i was testing or we went to hawkstone park with crockard we were testing our 250s and um i literally was riding around i thought oh my knee's hurting and then I don't know what it, how I did it or whatever happened, but um, that's where my meniscus went, and that that put me out of that that season 
at least half the season. I, I just could never come back properly until the end of the year, really, till till it kind of healed properly, to be honest. Got some uh, nice pictures here on the Honda. What what was that bike like? That was, uh, remember the old PSA? I think that had a jacket. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's uh, 92, I think that was. That was the first year I kind of tried to, the Honda changed from, I think, Castrol, Honda or Honda Britain, where they'd give me the bikes and I kind of got my own sponsors and got my van painted and kind of tried to do it my own, which I, which I did do. Um, and then um, and then I think later that year, I qualified in the Spanish GP and then I went to Japan after that. Um, basically, a guy said, look, you can have an opportunity to ride in Japan. And I went there. Um, and rode that championship for, I think, six rounds. And then I come back in 93 to race. And I think that year was a turning point in my life a little bit where I kind of went there, didn't appreciate a lot of what I was getting. And then when I went there and had nothing, um, I obviously had the stuff to do the job racing. But I'm sure when I come home, I think it kind of did me good to go there and kind of um, made me grow up quite a lot, really. And then when I come back, I kind of, 93 Suzuki, 94, I did well, won, won, won the British Championship. And then I kind of, I was quite steady then in the 125 Championship for um, maybe four years, five years. I was always round about top four in the Championship. So yeah. to me, that was kind of, a, you know, it was a good, good stepping stone to go to Japan, learn, kind of find my feet a bit on who I am basically and, I think that's that's kind of was a turning point in my career, to be honest. I will just give a quick shout out as well to Martin Pet. So I go for a lot of his photos, and he's got yeah. so many cool photos. Yeah, he has. Yeah, he's got some yeah, beauties there. Really epic. Yeah, I go through loads of them. I'm, I'm going to be bringing up quite a few more of them as well. But uh, just want to say thanks to him as well. Just some uh, mint yeah, pictures. Thanks. Yeah, there's some nice um, ones there. Let's get into the Kawasaki days. Then I've got some uh, nice pictures. I remember. When the team green went all like uh, quite cool with the old fox gear and the old McGrath helmet, I remember that. I think didn't when James on the team then was James on the team then? Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was um, yeah. a teammate. I mean, in '94, <laughs> so in '93, I rode for like kind of Hooper Suzuki, and um, yeah. Hooper offered me a, a deal for, and I'm I'm pretty sure I, I maybe even signed it because I had no other offer on the table. And um, yeah. and then uh, it was a bit naughty of me, and I think. I think me and Rob get on fine now, but it is for sure he wasn't too happy. So he was going to run Craig Prattley and Kelly Swanson. And yep. then I was going to have Suzuki's as like my, my own deal. And um, Matt Bates called me at Kawasaki and said, look, you can, I can give you Kawasaki. I'm going to run Kawasaki. Um, you can be one of the, you know, you'll be classes like the mainish rider there. I think it was me, James, Stephen Sword. And I think Ed Bradley that year. So, for me, it was a no-brainer. I, I got more bikes. I got, I was kind of his top rider. So I kind of had to let Rob down. I basically said, "Look, Rob, I've got a better deal. I'm, I'm going this way. You know, like I'm, I'm going to be the third rider on your team." And mm -hmm. Craig and Kelly would have got all the support, I, I, I believe. Yeah. And then, yeah. um, so I went to Kawasaki, and you know, at the time, Rob wasn't happy, but I was like. I've got to go this way. And then it turned out really good for me. I had two good years with Kawasaki. The second year at Kawasaki, when I was champion, I had, um, uh, what's it called? Um, I, I was an anemic. So I, w I was kind of struggling a bit with my health. Not, not, not bad way, but I was never really strong that year. Like I was always tired and sleeping and I had some good rounds. Like I think I won a race the very first round. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, just, just stuff in life the way it goes um but it was cool to run the one plate for a year that was yeah good. um Very cool. yeah yeah and it, it, the, the bike was a little bit different the second year as well like uh, we struggled to get it run as good as what we did in 94 um <laughs> and i also hired nick moores as my mechanic in 95 as well and um yeah. me and him were successful all the way to like 99 2000 um he's a great friend um and yeah, I'll, I'll never forget the times of him, um, truck driving, um, going around the country world. It was amazing times, really. Um, and yeah, he's he's now still doing Crocs bikes at... Um, I he was doing Crocard as well, wasn't he? I know that. Yeah, yeah he went to Crocard. 
Um, because uh, basically, I my career wasn't as as good as Crocard was going to be, and Crocard was a up and coming star really, and um, it was better for him to go to there and and he hopefully what what me and Nick learned together rubbed with Crocard, and Crocard was obviously very successful very quickly when Nick was on board with him really. Yeah. So um, how did how did it come about then after the Kawasaki? Um... With the cat hondas obviously they were cool looking bikes were, were they good bikes as well what was that like uh uh they were okay i mean um me and nick were you know we we had the uwp suspension um dave was obviously the manager keith his dad was there absolutely top bloke is um keith Ford. Yeah. um mm-hmm. mega guy i saw him a couple of years ago at um a land Ray. fantastic yeah. guy um with the cat, it, it was um, it was professional, um, but me and Nick also did a lot of stuff ourselves. Like, kind of, we changed to the upside down fork, so I wasn't comfortable with the. So that year was kind of. Um, I had flashes of, okay, sometimes, um, but you know, just me and Nick wanted to do. You know, we we kind of knew what we wanted to do, and we kind of went the direction in sometimes that we went. Um, whether it was right or wrong, but um, it was good times. It was a good year, um, good sponsors. Dave was the manager. Um, yeah, yeah, I can't, I can't fault anything there. Really, just yeah, it's just you know, it was a, it was an okay year. I didn't really perform like I should have done. I think at Wakes Cone, I had a really good ride there. Um, yeah. So I was kind of on and off that year quite a few times, really. So did it actually feel like you sort of spent most of the year sort of experimenting with the bike trying to make it work and all that type of thing instead of? Uh, it was kind of, um, we were doing Grand Prix and I didn't qualify quite a few times. Like I, I if I qualified, I could yeah. kind of do well in the race. And then yeah. um, if I, it was like my qualifying was my, my hard point on the 125 and it wasn't the 250, the 500, I missed it once. Um, but I was riding part part time. I'm running the cast team. I missed it at um, Learop, and I never forget. I was probably fast enough, but if anyone's been to Learop, you'd come through the tree section, you'd come out in the open section, and I don't think I could feel my arms for hanging on to the 500. That's what I mean. I was running the team and still trying to be a racer when I should have just went. Look, I'm not a racer anymore. I'm running the team. Just do the British Championship stuff and. So I was still struggling, which a lot of riders do now. When it comes to the end, you kind of have to, it's hard to switch off from racing. And um, that was a little bit of where I should have went, look, I've got a job. I'm running a team. Concentrate here. And um, that kind of come come to an end in, I think, 2001. I was still racing and I was at Canada Heights. I was racing and I was I'm sure I was third or fourth in the race and um, my bike locked up on a jump, which caused a punctured liver. And I think that was the day I kind of, you know, I spent a month in hospital and the team went to um, uh, Bulgaria for the Grand Prix and I couldn't go. And um, stuff like that kind of impacted that year a lot where I kindly thought, look, I have to, I have to kind of move on from racing. And the bike blew up because, I hadn't had time to jet it properly and it was detonating and it was just, um, it was just, it's hard. I think a lot of riders have been through what I went through in them days. Do you know what I mean? I think a lot of riders struggle after racing to find something to do and they never want to give up on it when you kind of have to go, look, the racing's done now. Let's get on with the next part of life, really. They all just have to like different mentality. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that took a long time for me to kind of get mm. that. And um yeah. That day there kind of fetched a little bit home to me. Even though I rode afterwards, I still, I'd still love to go now and ride the bike. But my shoulder is, I have to realize like it's not strong enough to ride. And I, the problem is I can still jump okay. I can still go half decent. But if you haven't got the strength in your body and stuff, you've got to, you've got to just realize, you know, what what it's about nowadays. Really, I get as much enjoyment watching my boy ride um as what i do racing it's quite funny because when he's on the line i get a little bit emotional and a little bit nervous and um that way it kind of takes takes away from me having to ride to be honest um this was a nice looking bike well what did what did that one go like 
<clears throat> oh, that that was good. Like that was TRS. We were pretty good that year, me and Nick. Like um, we built a good bike. That was the year mm -hmm. after after Cat Honda, um, yeah. and we rode for a TRS um, radio structures, which was Gary Jones and uh, Nathan Shelton was was my teammate, and um, <laughs> we kind of were given the bikes from Honda, um, mm -hmm. and we could do what we wanted. Suspension, Nick took control of that. We did our engines, parts from here, parts from there, put it together, jetted it. And that year, I think we had a pretty good year. We won one or two British championship overalls. Um, I can't remember the championship overall, but that was a good year. Like we struggled a little bit of GPs. If I qualified, I did good. If I didn't qualify, just a long road home. Um, but I never really was that successful at one, two, five GPs qualifying i was uh, in fact i was probably horrible at that um and when i did get in i normally got points which was satisfying but frustrating you could in them days you could get some people do really fast laps and qualify yeah. and they just qualify for the money and put no effort in the race where i always believe when i went to the start line i, I could get points which i did a lot of the time yeah, um, yeah so that was frustrating to see you know certain riders could bang a lap in and they just never had the commitment in the racing, which was um, heartbreaking a little bit, really. Yeah, because it's sort of almost a bit of an art, wasn't it? Like some of the riders, obviously, like you just said, like are better at racing. When, when the racing's on, they can perform. But sometimes just doing that quick lap, like you said, is sometimes a little bit of an art as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And there, there was there was definitely a lot of riders who could do that lap time. And it would just yeah. straighten me going, God, I can beat them in the race, but I just can't put the lap together. But, you know... I think it got better with time, but still, it was a, it was a, it was a, you know, like we did. Um, I have to get in there. We did um, Haverton Hall GP in uh, ninety or ninety one. Didn't qualify. Never forget. Didn't qualify. Then the week later, I went to Ireland in Clinchy, and I, I think I went five or six or six or seven in the races for six overall, awesome. and it blew my head off. You know, the week before, I didn't qualify. Then I went to Ireland and got them results with lots of riders. And I thought, how can that work out? And I qualified easily there. And the same amount of riders there as what they were in Haverton Hall. So that was, um, yeah, yeah, just crazy. Can qualify one week and not the other. And, yeah, it's just frustrating, really. As a rider, even nowadays, you know, like Charlie Putnam didn't qualify in um, Southwick. You know, and he kind of was riding really well, like really well. I, you know, I'm, I'm quite, I think if if, if they're not riding well, I'll, I'll tell them. Yeah. But that day he was riding really well, just didn't, um, just didn't get in. But yeah. it's very hard then to tell him when, when you've got a week of where he's, you know, you can tell it, put him really down. But you have yeah. to say, look, you're riding really well. You, you know, you, I can't fault you riding that day. You just didn't get in, move on till next week. And then he qualified at Millville. And, um, you know, where if he wasn't riding well, I would I'd put him straight. But that day he rode really well. And um, it's still hard for a rider to get over that non-qualification thing, where I think some people deal with that really quite well. And yeah. um, which is, yes, everyone's different people, aren't they? Different person, really. Yeah, for sure. Actually, talking about that Ireland thing, I just saw that Darren's put here that Princey, Raced a lot in Ireland during his TM days. What are his best memories for some of these battles? How to love on one twenty fans? <laughs> yeah, they they were good days because when I rode for TM, I had to do the Irish Championship, and um, obviously mm. Adam, Adam there was really good friend. Um, mm. I played a lot of golf with his dad, Robin Bless him um, mm -hmm. golf, which was like mega, and yeah. um, they treated me like their own son there, so they'd look after me really well, and um, we always raced against Adam. Um, Philip McCulloch, and uh, he, he, he was aggressive, man. Like, <laughs> honestly, like, uh, I get on with Philip, you know, oh, fine. Like, um, but God, like, as a as a competitor in Ireland, God, like, I remember going there, going, man, alive. Like, I, I need to be racing next weekend. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, it was quite furious racing over there between obviously me, Adam, and Philip. We went at it most Irish Championship races, and. Um, yeah, like it was, it was good days, good days, good entertainment. Them races for sure, very good entertainment. What, what was uh, 
what year was that on the TN then, uh, Neil? And what was that boat? What was the boat like? That was '98. That was. I, I rode for Woody Woodsworth, who is a um, yeah. great, great character. He was the TM, and um, basically fantastic bike, super fast bike. That bike was mm. fast. Um, sometimes you get a Friday night bike, um, which you do with a, you know a lot of people. Um, so um, I shouldn't say a lot of people, but yeah, you, there there was always because I think TM was a small factory, so you'd get one and you'd be like. Geez, it's a rocket ship. Then you get up one out of slightly different part, it like um, you know, different bolts. And so it was a very off-the-shelf factory bike that was. Pusa rode it that year as well. Um, but that bike, that engine, th that bike was a rocket ship. Like, you yeah. know, you didn't have to do really any much to that at all. Like that bike yeah. was good. Um, but we had a few times me and Nick were frustrated because um Wade's cone, we were uh we we should have won that day like in the first race i beat everybody like that race like and it was a race where i can go i got a start everyone was in that race no one really had a problem i pulled away and won the race then the second race crashed at the start come through to third or fourth i think in the race which is another good ride and in the last race today the there was a pile up on the start i come through again in that race and um it was halfway through Halfway through the race, I'd got up to where I need to be to, to have the overall. And um, never forget my foot, my foot come off the foot peg. And I thought, that's a bit strange. Like, that's a bit strange. And I looked down and the, the swing and arm pin had snapped and was coming out over Jeez. the top of the foot peg. And, um, you know, like, and that day would have been such a great day. And it was completely out of mine and Nick's hands that day. Yeah. You know? And obviously, I, I had the DNF that race because the swing and arm was actually going to come out. And um, so, but they were good days. There were days where I can actually go that day. I was pretty good that day. And, um, but frustrating on the other side. So we, we had a few times like that with the TM, but you could never fault the power and you didn't have to put a lot of time into that to get the power either. Um, mm. So to me, if that year was like a good year, good bike. Mm. And yeah, she was, yeah, she, you know, if you needed a whole shot, that was the bike to be on really. It's funny you say that because I actually was riding Suzuki in '98, and I got uh, a sponsored TM for '99. But yep. it was like one of them bikes, like you said, that I just, just, it just couldn't get on with it at all, and I ended up taking it back. In the oh, end. did you? Did you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just some, some were different to others, you know. You yeah. know, like, um, you know, uh, just certain bits were different. But you know, yeah. like, uh, I had the standard bike to start the year, and then. Yeah. The, the bike there in the picture was a standard one. Then they give me a Pusa replica bike. Nice. And, and that was the bike that kind of had a lot of different parts on it. And um, it was a one-off bike made. Genie was the mechanic for Pusa. He built the bike, you know, and then it was so fast. And that bike was mega. But, you know, the swinging arm, the swinging arm pin snapped on it. Um, so it was, it was kind of a test bike. But I, I wouldn't regret them days because Woody gave me an opportunity, give me a good bike. And TM give me everything that year I, I could have asked for, really. You know, um, you know, no one else was going to give me technically a factory bike. So I, it was an opportunity I couldn't turn down, really. Just got a, a question off of uh, Stephen Pear as well. Hiya, Stephen. Ain't you good, buddy? JP Cycling, uh, mate. Yeah. D does Neil think the GPs are as good fun now? So it was back in the day as the time you all had and the story that will stay with us forever. Uh, I think it's very, um, no, it's never, never going to be like it was like, never like, um, you know, back in them days, you'd all kind of be getting on. I mean, now at the GPs, people don't really talk to each other. You know, it's very different, it's, but it's just the, le the level is different. You know, you've got the riders level is massive. Like everything is completely different to what it was back in them days. And um, I think them days, you know, even the British Championship pits are, are not like they used to be. You know, it's it's just kind of the the way the way way it's going. Um, the GPs, I think, are. Um, I have really no interest. I obviously follow the results. I look at, you know, like when Jeffrey Earl into himself um, just recently, I kind of thought I don't need to see any more racing this year. You know, they kind of gutted me really um, mm -hmm. just because of the commitment he puts in the, the level and to, to be hurt again. I thought it's, it's not, it's not fair really. 
Um, and I had the same feeling when I watched Tomacker himself at the Supercross. Soon as I saw him pull up, I was like, off with the TV. That's <laughs> about enough of that. You know, when, yeah. so it's kind of, yeah, it's just different. I think the level's different. The, you know, the, the amount of money you need now to go Grand Prix racing, you know, and, you know, you go to America, you do an AMA national and you qualify. You get money in your pocket. You know, you get you get your money for getting there, for qualifying. You've got to qualify to get your money. If you go to a Grand Prix, you don't get any money, you know, for, you know, if, if a rider puts up the money to go race there, he doesn't even get money to cover his entry. I mean, to me, that doesn't make sense. Whether people hate me for saying that or disagree with me, just isn't isn't right. Do you know what I mean? Um, so to me, yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not really a fan, to be honest. That's just that's just my feeling. You know, they, they need to put prize money in there and or they need to give something back to the teams or to the riders so the riders can get something back, you know. And I think doing the AMA nationals, you get you obviously don't get what it costs to go there, but they actually get some money in their pocket, which to me for sure, in front, I've got the money. They can put some money back into the riders' pockets, I would think. And that's basically how the GPs used to be, wasn't it? You qualified well, it was. for their um, stuff. Yeah. You know, and they kind of say that the team should put it in, but the team's paid to go there. You know, it's a tricky subject because a lot of people look at me and go, oh, yeah, what's he know? But, like, to me, you know, the riders, if they qualify or they, you know, they, they don't have to. That's why if, if, if they put prize money or they put qualifying money there, I'm pretty sure you see the lines full of 40 riders. Yeah. I, you know, tell me if I'm wrong. Like, and, yeah. you know, if if they, they should see that themselves, but, but mm. I don't think they actually want 40 riders on the line. So it's a tricky one. You know, don't get me on about that. I'd like to leave that <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm the same as well. I do that. Even the, I got to do the the actual the MXGP commentary the other week, which was buzzing to do it. But yeah, it doesn't it doesn't float my boat? You know, like doesn't get you excited like back in the day. So it's like difficult one. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is, and you know the GP. You know, like you know, for me, you know, like um, it just doesn't make sense to me. So that yeah, I'm better off leaving it there. Really. <laughs> that's what like dick said like, in most cases gps look like an outdoor supercross yeah i think i think they some way that it all goes down to the track designer so the track designer mm. uh, you know has built the best he can um i think sometimes they need to look at some jumps like the weekend at millville there was a there was a triple triple uphill i know it's not mxgp it's ama but the triple uphill was like they were they were two big big triples up the hill, and you yeah. could literally see, uh, let's say, uh, Jet Lawrence or Sexton or um, uh, even Kevin Morans. They they were doing this triple triple uphill, and yeah. you could tell their Supercross experience was ahead of the guys from tenth backwards. Yeah. You know, and um, if I was if I was running that track, I'd have been like. We don't need them in there. Do you know what I mean? That could be an easy, safe double where the triple was quite tricky to get over. And um, John Adamson, who was riding for us there, like that was a tricky section for him to to get over. He got it in the end, but still, like, you know, when you look at the corner, you think, God, like, and there was not many people jumping that triple, triple up the hill. Um, and same in some of the GPs. I mean, you know, some of the jumps of Matley when you get there, they're, they're big old jumps, and um, it's just. I think again, it's the, the the way the sport is changing. Do you know what I mean? I think some tracks are good like that. I think if they ripped them more, it would slow down the speed a bit. Um, so there's all different ways they they can. But at the end of the day, whoever designs that track or running that track or whoever preps that track is in control of that. And until they someone actually stands up and goes, "Look, that's too big," or you know, we need more flat corners or we need more double lines. I think in America, they they have a lot of double lines, which kind of makes, yeah. they, there's more like, there's probably some corners, five, six ruts, different lines. You don't really see that anywhere anymore. You, you know what I mean? Um, and I think if you look at the track at Oxford, the last MX Nationals, um, I spoke to Bobby, I wasn't there. He said the track was so technical, so rutty because they ripped it. They did a good job with the track. And I think if, if they do that more often, rip the track, 
I think it'll slow it down and it'll make it more technical and the and the and the quality riders will show forward really. Yes. Um Neil, you haven't got a light that you can just uh for that room. Right? Yeah, lost, oh, lost yeah. you a bit. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Is that better? Beautiful that is. Yeah, thank oh, you. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> I was like, I actually think I'm losing it. I was like, I was trying to darken myself out then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, trying to get not seen. Yeah, that's it. Uh, got Andy Kirkham, he's just put uh, late to the interview, Lee. Don't matter, you can uh, watch this back, it's all recorded, so you can watch it back on my YouTube channel. But he's put, I remember Neil from racing our local club meetings, the Dragons. Uh, what was his favorite track back in those days? Oh, it's Be Be Bel Air Farm for sure. Bel Air Farm. Bel Air Farm, or um, yeah, Bel Air Farm. That was a mega track. Yeah, that was mega. Like, um, I had so many races there. Uh, God, oh, yeah. Like, like um, if I drive up past there sometimes, it's quite interesting because um, you feel like go popping in there and seeing if the track's still there. Um, yeah, mega, mega place. Yeah, Bel Air Farm for sure. Or even, yeah, now coming back, Abigail was good. That was Dragons as well. Um, Abigail, we could go to real. We used to go to real on the power boats at night. Mum and dad used to take me there. Um, yeah, they were good old days. They were good old days. Yeah, you just said they were mint tracks. <laughs> yeah, they were. Yeah, they were good. Yeah, I think Bella Farm's still there. I've looked on Google Maps, it's still there. Like the tracks there, I think. So. A, have to have a look at it one day. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, very I good. Have a run with this. Uh, Toby Atherton, hi Toby, how are you going? Uh, hi Neil, do you still get on the bike much? If you, so you haven't been out on the bike for a while, did you say? Uh, no, I, I rode in. Um, I rode in America uh, the start of this year. Like I, I can go around a flat track on little jumps. Just um, yeah. it's just I've just I, about uh, two months ago, I had another surgery to clear out my socket, and um, so I'll probably. I've got to run in Yoshi's um, KX250, which um, uh, I want to have a go on that just to check it's running all right before he comes over. So I'll probably <laughs> take that out down the field or go to my local Woodford track um, if Lombard will give me the key, Daka from Lombard. And then mm -hmm. um, I'll take it for a few laps around there. See if I can keep it with my boy now. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that'll be the next thing. Wouldn't it? That's it. That's it. <laughs> uh, Lee Williams put Chad Linton. Oh, yeah. Mega track. There. But the reason I didn't mention Cheddleton, that was always um, Cheshire North West track. That was never. Well, I could be standard, but that was that that track is still there. That track is still there. And if you went there today, you'd be like you could run a British championship here. It's a really good track. That is very good yeah. track. And Andy just said all houses now. So I presume he was on about their tracks. Oh, what? Che um, Frogham is. He must have been on about all the other tracks you said before that. You said, yeah, well, Bel, -Air, Bel Air Farm, then it could be houses. Mm. I'll oh, be on my Google that's Maps later like checking that out. Yeah, <laughs> corrected him. Exactly. <laughs> Beautiful. So there's uh, the old uh, Honda days with the KS team. Was that like an enjoyable experience there? Like you said, you liked the 500 and all that there as well. That was a good bike, wasn't it? Yeah, that was a good bike. Like, uh, again, Nick built that, and um, we kind of constructed the newer chassis on mm -hmm. the back with a tank, and <clears throat> some people are still selling them now. We built, like, four or five, no, maybe six of them, and um, that was a good-looking bike. Like, um, mm -hmm. But it was funny because we, we I rode the bike for a year and I had pretty pretty okay in the British Championship. I whole shot a lot of races on that bike, and yeah. then um, – that Grand Prix, I didn't qualify in Lerop. I never forget some idea. I'll ride the 500 class at Lerop. And I never forget, we rode the bike at Dunkirk, the old Dunkirk track. And I remember yeah. riding the first few laps thinking, how the hell did I even race this bike? You know, <laughs> it felt, yeah, felt a dinosaur. And um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, a, it was a beast in them days, that bike. That was um, Namor Grand Prix, that was. Yeah, proper track that opened them all, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, I was. I was fortunate to race there. Grand Prix qualified as well, and yep. um, yeah, that was a good. That was yeah, that was kind of a pretty special place. And JP's there on the left, if you can see. Oh yeah, I can see him on the far left. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Harry Ainsworth to the right. Uh, yeah, Harry know. Ainsworth. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, a few years ago, that is two thousand. I think two thousand. Yeah, maybe two thousand. Two thousand and one, maybe. 
Good days. Yeah, very good. <laughs> the, that is at uh, Ken Hall track, Langrish. Uh, yeah, Langrish, Ken Hall track. That's just about to say that looks like Langrish. That's the Ken, that? I think the Ken Hall race, I think that was. Mm. They used to have like the bank holiday and all that, didn't they? I think that is the bank holiday, and I think Yoshi yeah. was racing that day as well for us. I think, and maybe oh, was Josh it? was there that day as well. No, oh, was he? That's what she I mean. I was still, still trying to race them days when I should have just said, "Look, I'll just <laughs> yeah. watch from now on." <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's it. Did you see that track? Because I, I, used, I tried to get it uh, for one of our reunions. Tried to get it back because it was uh, we also used to race. I rode champion of champions there and stuff like yeah. that back in the. Mountains. I, I, I did like it. Like um, it was just different. Like it was it was like concrete that track. So yeah, you had yeah. the uphill bits, and then um, there was the fast bit behind the start. Was like like you you felt like you're doing 100 miles an hour up there going up the hill, and then across the top. But it was always dusty there. Yeah. Like I never forget loads of races where you just couldn't even see a hand in front of you. It was that dusty at that place? Yeah, a bit sketchy sometimes. Isn't it? Like that. Yeah. Oh, that was uh, that is. A bike, Alan Hambridge, a uh, good friend of mine, he yeah. built that from an XR 400. Did he? And we got a 500 kit on it, fitted the pipe because yeah. Harry had this. Um, Harry Ainsworth had this thing, he wanted me to do the four stroke championship, and I was like, Yeah, yeah. no worries, I can do that. Yeah. And um, Al put so much time into that bike, and I think we had a couple of maybe top fours on, on that bike. Um, yeah. And then I don't know what would happen. Oh, I think, uh, I don't know what happened. I think we did the four-stroke championship, and I can't remember where I finished, but had some okay rides on it. But it was um, a bike that struggled against the, the YZF 426s coming then. And that was this was air-cooled, obviously. And, um, yeah, it was not really the job. Even though we got it really good, it just wasn't as good as, like, a YZ 426, really. That is in uh, Ireland uh, international race. Something like Adam Lyons, no. Um, you know. It was like a Wednesday night or a weekend race when they paid us to go to Ireland. I think the whole team was there as well. Crockard we were all there that day as well. They were saying it was so. Andy said it was Bel Air. It's all houses now. Oh right, okay. Oh god. Yeah. What could I? No, it isn't. No, it isn't. I didn't realise it was. I knew they were building the houses all all the way down the road. I didn't realise they were going over the track. Actually, sounds like it is. It's typical nowadays, isn't it? Yeah, they're just built everywhere nowadays. That's for sure. Yeah, Ryan's Ryan's just said. I remember you riding Billy's bike at Contrillis in the mechanic race. I think it was two oh seven eight. Did riding for them races make you want to ride again? Now, you, did you realise you were done racing? I rode I rode Mike Brown's bike that day and um yeah. I struggled that day because um I, I won the race and I, I remember the mechanics race I won it but um I couldn't get on the bike and then on the Monday we were going MX Donations at Buds Creek and then when yeah. I landed in Buds Creek I well I was walking to the plane and I, I I started I couldn't walk and I was like what the hell's going on but I got to the plane and I thought god my back's hurting I had a prolapsed disc in my back. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, so I yeah. got to America and um, I was pretty much knackered. So we had um, Ken Dyker there. So we had yeah. to unload the crate and stuff. And then um, I was in agony. I was lying down in the camper going like, I, I can't even get out of the camper. And um, it was funny because the Asterix medical unit was there. And um, yeah. they come and got me, took me to the truck. And um, they give me an injection. I was walking the next day all around the place. No way. Yeah. Like... Because the guy said, "Oh, you've got a problem with um T five vertebrae or in the in a something wrong with your disc." And um, so literally that next week, I had an MRI scan, I had a prolapsed disc, and then um, they have to go take um, some of my. I've had some jelly removed out the side of my back in there. Um, but yeah, that that knocked me off my feet. Like I literally was walking to the plane and thought, "God, I actually can't walk. Something's wrong." And then um, I got onto the plane, obviously, because, you know, it's like you kind of think, oh, it'll ease up. Got to America, and I thought, God, this isn't easing up. And then that, that's what they diagnosed I'd, I'd done. Found this online as well. That's quite quick. Yeah, that's a few years ago. Yeah, that's, uh, 
Um, Lee from uh, Design is a good friend of mine. He painted most of my helmets. I'm sure yeah. he's painted that one probably. Um, he was pretty good at that stuff. Lee was. I do like the old painted helmets. Yeah, they they're not they were nice. Them that was like in them days. In, that was the thing to get done really most of the time. Really. Yeah, it was. Yeah, definitely for sure, especially that. Heads and Fred Suzuki. That was the start of um, kind of um, my next thing after Par Honda, really. Like, because Taz, Suzuki, Philip Neal um, yeah. kind of stopped the team with Suzuki. And then they asked me if I could run the Suzuki team. Then I was fortunate enough to have um, uh, Stuart, um, Stuart, uh, what's his second name? Stuart from Heads and All Freds. He supported it with Gary Needs on the, he was on the right there. And uh, they would come title sponsor. Suzuki obviously put quite a bit of money in at them them days. And I was fortunate enough to run um, Luke Burton come with Stuart, who was kind of teaching his kid how to ride. And then obviously Graham. Um, Graham was on board. So obviously had um, top flight riders riders on board. So I kind of uh, hit the floor running with that team, really, which, which was, yeah, it was, you know, I think I had four good years at Suzuki. And still now I kind of, like the Suzuki quite a lot, just need to let yeah, him yeah, yeah. be good to go, really. Yeah, yeah. Kickstart Kenny and all that. He's obviously uh, running the Suzuki now. Is looking good. Well, not not many people know. In 2018, um, uh, Bobby was a lot of points down on Jake at the, at the end of the year. And if we had electric start that year, he'd have been a little bit closer to Jake. I wouldn't have said it would have made a difference. Um, yeah. But um, so many races, Bobby crashed the bike or stalled the bike and God, I mean, at Hawkstone Park, he um, he crashed, and he was a lap down for. He was a lap down, but he was still, I think, seventh or eighth in the race because he couldn't yeah. start the bike. He got it yeah. running, obviously crossed the line, and then um, we got penalised for noise control as well. So we went from like seventh to like sixteenth place in that race. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but we had electric <laughs> start. He'd have probably, he'd have probably. You know that that year we yeah, yeah. definitely missed the electric start, really. Yeah, been been and gone, Mister Meredith. Yeah, yeah, he loaned uh, he helped us with the Bobby Chef thing as well. He loaned us some bikes as well um, yeah. for Bobby for the year because with Bobby it was um, it was a chance where quite a few people come together. Nigel come together, Lombard come together, um, lots of people come together to make it happen. Um, and it was quite a tricky year that because I was working full time truck driving. Um, so then Andy at Lombard would let me have a Friday if I was lucky off, but he pretty much did most of the time. So I'd have to do the bikes in, in at night at home or at work. And then, um, and then obviously Saturday try and ride with Bobby and that kind of hindered us quite a bit because we wouldn't get a good track on Saturday to ride before the British. So when we had a good day Saturday, it rolled on to a good day Sunday. Um, if we had a bad day, we had a bad day Saturday before Hawkstone because there just wasn't enough time to get everything ready. And Hawkstone was a, a little bit of a day where we were just chasing our tail all day, if you know what I mean. And it just, it just didn't end well there at all, really. <laughs> what, uh, what riders when you were younger then, uh, Neil, growing up, uh, obviously aspiring to be a pro rider, what, who was your like heroes, you know, your idols and all that? Who were the riders? Uh, I would kind of say Rob Herring was pretty, pretty special in the day like um i know robbie a little bit and um he was just you know he was always on the limit of i think you get a rider you get a rider who goes around a corner and you've ridden and you kind of think oh it's going to be slippy here i don't think robbie ever understood if it's going to be slippy you know and i had this chat you know, and i think that was the difference between the speed he had to other people so when when he when it didn't slip away he was fantastic, you know, and I think that makes the difference even nowadays to, you know, you watch, um, uh, you watch, um, it's hard to say about Jet Lawrence because I've watched him the last two weeks and you watch Sexton and like Sexton seems like he doesn't think he can ever crash and he crashes a lot, <laughs> you know, and it's like he, he puts that much trust in the front tire thing and, oh, that's a little bit risky okay. there and he, and he yeah. pays the price. Do you know what I mean? Um, fantastic rider don't get me i'm just giving the difference of yeah, the yeah, speed some people have you know because i think at the weekend he was a little bit quicker than jet but it's like the quicker he was was why he was on the floor a few times where jet could understand where the grip was and how much to 
put on on the tires and stuff. So yeah. Robbie was really good at that. So I say Rob Herring was like um, one of the top right, you know, for me, like fantastic rider. And then yeah. my probably idol was probably Rick Rick Johnson. Like, um, yeah, like even this day now, if I see him, I'm like, hey, I was Rick Johnson there. Like to me, he was, you know, I was fortunate to have training school with him at um, uh, Worcester Supercross. We did a training school there. I was fortunate. I was um, uh, 89. I did that when I was schoolboy champion in that day, uh, that, yeah. that year. And uh, yeah. that was a hard, that was a, you know, good day. So I would say Rick Johnson and probably, you know, I always looked up to Robbie because I think he was always, everyone wanted to go as fast as he could go, you know, and then um, beat him a few times in a few races, one, two, five, when he obviously lost a front end and went down. Um, but his speed was always, well, you, you know, like you, you've been around where he yeah. just had something, some speed other people didn't have them days, really. Yeah. Yeah, I loved him as well. And uh, <clears throat> I was uh, obviously lived in Swindon by Fox Hill and then he was on the cast of and that. Jesus Christ. Yeah, he could, he could make everyone, you know, on a British championship, the, you know, you'd have four races, one, two, five, two, fifty in the, in them, in, in, in that class, which I think was six rounds. He'd win all yeah. four races, and no one yeah. even saw him that day. Do you, do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, just yeah, special special rider. You know what I mean? And he just had, you know he went to Paris, Bercy, I think, and I think he shocked the world there when he nearly beat quite a few top Americans. They never even heard of him. Yeah. So very very talented guy, very, very talented. I got I got to meet RJ as well at Fox uh, Hill last year at the Vets. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I did his interview and I'm thinking, you know, you do an interview, you're thinking, I don't know, I don't think he's going to remember me or know me. And then he went Lee and I was like, Jesus Christ, like, I was literally like, oh my God. Yeah, I think he follows it quite a lot. Do you know what I mean? I think he's quite yeah. on social media. He's Yeah, yeah, he's, he is, yeah. He was a character who you never really yeah. forgot, if you know what I mean. And yeah, he still now true. brings a lot of clout with him, really. He does, yeah, yeah. That was epic. I was, uh, proper starstruck for that one. Yep, there's my boy there with the trophies. Yeah. It's all it's all on now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so he's, in, he's in bed asleep now. He'll he'll probably watch this tomorrow probably. Yeah, I let him get. He's got a picture on there. Look. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, mega. Dad was chef of your podium, uh, the MX Nationals, wasn't it? Is that what you said? Oh uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, pump with that. Yeah, it was good. Like I wasn't there, but he, he didn't realise he got the podium, so that they left early. My wife and Chad, and um, yeah. and then. Um, Bob Rashev's daughter, Ava, she went yeah. up and got his trophy for him. So they, they did a job there. And I, I collected it today from the workshop. Um, so I fetched yeah. it home for him today. So he'll be, he's pumped with that. Yeah, he'll be pumped with that, for sure. Uh, so now, how was that for you then with the whole uh, motocross the nations? Obviously, it's a, it's a really cool thing to be part of. Uh, atmosphere, everything about it. Everyone loves the motocross the nations. So what was that like, being involved with all that? Uh, I was very fortunate. Five years I did yeah. that, and um, yeah. very fortunate. Um, and kind of when you do it, it was kind of just me and me and my wife doing it the whole time. You know, like uh, we went to the races, um, just me and my wife. Like we we did it all. Um, yeah. I think I did an okay job. I mean, like um, when when the when we had, I think, two times we, we were close to the podium. I think Sean yeah. was unlucky where he broke his chain in Latvia. Tommy yeah. went 1-1 one, one that day um, on the on the, on the the 250F. Like, he was, like, Tommy always, uh, he always give 100% MX and All the guys did. But yeah. Tommy was, like, extra special, everyone. Like, he, like, he give it everything. Um, Dean Wilson was, like, fantastic to work with. Sean was fantastic. Max is Max. He's fantastic. You know, they, they all give it all they could. And Jake rode for us in Lommel. He did really well there. Just unfortunately, his bike blew up in, I think, the first or second race, which was unfortunate. So we had good times, but we also, you know, we were unfortunate at least two rounds where we could have potentially had the, had the podium where it just, it just wasn't to be. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, I've been lucky enough to do it for five years and, I'll never forget that really. It was it was good, yeah. you know. Um just would have been nice to have got um got on the podium, but it's yeah. it's it, it's one thing being there doing it and being involved with the guys and um every time I've picked or had a rider, um they've they've performed the best they can that day, you know. And um 
and that's all you can ask for them, really. You know, and it's I think you need a, a little bit of luck at the MX Donations. Yeah. Um, yeah. um it's never always a cert on who's gonna win it. Um it'll be interesting this year for me- who America bring or who how committed America are with it. Um yeah, be, yeah. because you know it, in America it's it's different when they come to Europe and it's, it's the same when we go there. But I mean, you know, last year it was quite uh interesting. Um there's there's gonna be some good teams this year, you know. If, if the Lawrence brothers comes, there's two strong riders right there. Um, it's wherever they come. That's that's the thing. I hope they do because it would be good for them. And I think they're, they're, they're bang up for racing. So hopefully they make the journey because European fans will love to see them guys racing. That's for sure. Jamie Smith just come in as well. <laughs> he's uh, got, uh, got involved with the British Championship this year. So he's enjoying it with the old Ultimate Wheels boys. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. He's doing a good job. He's got a nice little setup going, like looks professional. And um, yeah, yeah, you cool. need people like that coming in. You know, they, they're putting little setups up there. They look the part and um, yeah, like it, you know, just, it gives another uh, team in the pits, which is what we need. You know, this year there's lots of little teams coming in, not little teams, but other teams coming in, doing a good job, having, looking good. And that, that's what we need. I, I think a few rounds this year um, have been stepping in the right direction, you know, like uh, with the fans coming, um, so if the fans keep coming, hopefully we can progress. You know, the the live stream needs to come back. Like, yeah. uh, that's not been at the last few British championships. Whatever the problem is there, needs sorting straight away. Um, whether it's they need to get sponsors or they need to pay for it, needs paying for. That's got to happen. Um, because you see MX Nationals, they have it. Um, it needs to happen. So hopefully they'll, they'll get their finger in and get that sorted. Um, and then it's better for everyone round if that happens and then hopefully progress and uh, keep going in that direction, really. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Ian Chesterman here. But uh, evening, Neil. Uh, what's been the most rewarding, racing back in the day or being involved in motocross management? Uh, uh, I get rewarded either way. Racing, you know, you know, watching my boy ride is the most rewarding for me ever really you know i have you know uh that that for me is the most rewarding um i would say i've had some good results which are rewarding um but there's nothing um like you know josh coppins um kenda Diker, they they won overalls at the team and that's that's kind of a high high step um but but i get i get i get rewarded for watching charlie putnam qualify you know, like you'll love me saying that, but I actually mean it. You know, we had yeah, John, yeah. we had Gilbert last year, um, yeah, yeah. Bob Brashev coming back. I get rewarded every time I see the boys give a hundred percent. So it, I don't, I don't really class anything higher. I, I'm rewarded. You know, every time I watch my boy ride, every time if I'm working for Bobby or I'm working for whoever, if I get a hundred percent, I'm I'm rewarded that way. I, I I'm not in it really. You know, a lot of people maybe, you know, they want to get a wage out. They want to do that. And obviously I get paid to do what I do, but I, 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 I'm here because I want to be here doing what I do. I don't yeah. really go to many, you know, um, uh, I don't like all the social media side of it, but I, I'm here just, I enjoy what I do and um, I'm rewarded every weekend. I see the guys do good and that's all I want to do. If I can get someone better or help someone along the way, that's all I'm interested in. You, you know what I mean? And if and if comes a time where that doesn't interest me anymore, then I will just go do something else. You know what I mean? And I've got a great family, so I've got plenty of things. Like I'm going this weekend to watch my boy at Kensworth. Um, I'm happy. I'm as happy going there. Oh, what are we, what will be going to Unadilla in three weeks' time? So yeah, yeah. I, I'm happy whatever I do, really. And like I said, I'm just here to kind of help the guys along the way. If I can help them, that's all well and good, really. What was uh, Billy McKenzie's a bit of a character? He actually FaceTimed me this week, which is a bit bizarre. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's, he's a he, funny man. Yeah, he is a funny man. Um, it's, it's funny, funny because man. we had John Adamson at the last um, uh, AMA uh, riding for us. Because um, obviously, yeah. Bob Chef, they won't give him a license to race there. 
yeah. which is um yes it's not right but don't get me on about that but the um yeah. John, very similar to billy um like a uh, little bit stubborn stubborn um yeah. but but it, that that's just their mentality you know and um billy was very very talented rider he could yeah. shock a lot of people and i think the first year we had him in 08 the bike was really good like established bike yeah. where the 09 honda was tricky wasn't set up quite right and i think it was hard to get it right and mm -hmm. um i think then um billy struggled that year with injuries and we were kind of always against the eight, eighth ball then trying to get it correct for him and he injured his thumb and that was kind of the end of the year really to be honest yeah yeah it's uh see so uh, he was just saying to me uh that he's riding again and stuff like that and just sort of like said he's like pretty much not doing much training or anything but he's enjoying having a ride yeah i think he i think he trained i think he kind of at the minute of the british championship he gets pretty good starts he does billy mm. and then he kind of gets the job done um pretty well like he can be top three or four in the in the british championship um not not three or four sorry he can start about fifth or six and he can hang in there for i think last year at whitby he was hanging in there for more than half the race, mm. and then he dropped back in the mud. And you think, I don't know, he can still go pretty fast for someone who's riding probably part time. So fair play to Billy; he's still got speed, and he must still be enjoying it to be showing up every weekend to the the British. Uh, I'm not sure he was at the last round, but he was definitely at Fox Hills, where I think he had the ear infection, which kind of knocked his confidence a little bit, really. Yeah. So if I had to push you on that, what would be what you'd say would be it's been your favorite race bike throughout your career? You've obviously have been in some good teams, good bikes. <sighs> but the bikes in the team or bikes I've ridden. Both. <laughs> um that's a really good question. That yeah. is a really good question. I would say, and the, you you're you're gonna find this hard to believe, I come yeah. across a um a YZ80 1982 and I had yep. that bike when I was a kid and um, the guy wanted quite a bit of money for it and uh, it was like two and a half grand or whatever it was and um, I, I saw the bike and I was like I remember that when I was a kid and I would say I've got a few bikes and I would say that's the one bike it sits in my boy's bedroom like I put it in his bedroom and that's one bike I look at and think I'm so glad I've got that bike yeah you know what I mean? Which sounds yeah. funny because um, I have a few nice bikes and um, I was like, that's one bike. Like I still, I I built, um, so when Bob Brashev won the British Championship in 2010 on Cass Honda, yeah. um, the team kind of was at its end. And um, I was fortunate to have, I, I was building the bikes for Bobby that year because there was no one really left in the team. And um, so I built the the bike that would have won the British Championship at um, Hawkstone Park. Mm -hmm. So, and it was rained off. You, if you remember, it was cancelled that day. And um, I built that bike, new chassis, everything brand new. Which you do if you're going for a championship. You're kind of trying to put everything into it. And um, that bike, I still have that bike. That that means quite a lot to me as well, really, because kind of uh, the team was kind of ending, and I kind of had to put a lot of my own time into that bike to make it work where I could have easily have just gone two months before that race gone. Look, I've got to find a job and move on. Um, and that, that's kind of, I think that's where me and Bobby have kind of built our relationship up. So yeah. that's an important bike. Um, I think the one bike everyone probably would want in the world is probably the 86, uh, uh, HRC bike, you know, the factory 500. I think that's a looking bike is one bike. <laughs> No, no, it isn't actually. I'd go for the YZM, the YZM bike. That's probably the best. Yeah. Yeah. You don't see too many Amber back nowadays, do you? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember Leaf Pearson. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. And I think, I, I think Hakim Carlquist, if he was still alive, I would think if you asked him the question, he left Yamaha the year before they built that bike. And I think he probably would have regretted that at that mm. time, I would have thought. Yeah. Yeah, nice points, aren't they? Because I remember him racing against 4P, Malher, people like that back in the day, you know, and Dave had an, uh, like a factory Honda and you and Malherb and Gabor's, and you'd have um, Huck and Carquist on his 
air-cooled Yamaha. And I mean, yeah, you you know, like you ride a Yamaha air-cooled and you ride a factory HRC bike. He must have been some rider to even keep up with them guys or beat them them days. Do you know what I mean? Proper warrior as well. Yeah, he? definitely, definitely yeah. warrior. He was <laughs> Still love that iconic thing where he obviously pulled up at the mall with a drink. Yeah, <laughs> that's mega, yeah. Under the yeah, old clean face mask. <laughs> yeah, that. that was, yeah. And and he he, he was he had a massive lead that day, didn't he, on the KX five hundred? Yeah, yeah mental. Yeah, was, he's good was, uh, good good rider, very good rider. I was fortunate enough to see him when my dad took me to Hawkstone Park, obviously back in uh eighty three, eighty four to watch him and I never forget them days like he just stood there yeah. going Jesus Christ, open faced helmets. Imagine if you had a guy riding now with an open faced helmet. <laughs> it's not even worth thinking about, is it? No, I'll be talking to Edmondson on Monday about his open face helmet days as well. He always used to. <laughs> yeah, I think I he, you need to ask him about a Froome when he won the 125. I think he smoked them all that day in the mud, I think. Yeah, I think I remember. Yeah, I remember that. I'm like, definitely asking him about the motocross side of things as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was quite. Yeah, I think he was world champion or it's, maybe world champion, and then he went there and won the British one two five that day. And I think I was like, bloody hell, Jura riders beat everyone. But yeah, very talented, very talented motorbike yeah. rider, really. Yeah, he's flipping James Bond now. <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah, you forget about that. Yeah, I'll be talking about that Monday. Be interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Over the when you were a schoolboy, and that obviously like. You know, later on in the British Championship, you normally get a number where you are in the Championship and all that. Did you ever have a, like a favourite race number? What, was there any reason behind it for the schoolboys, that type of thing? Oh, uh, yeah, no, number 10. So I, I ran number 10 pretty much my whole schoolboy career. Um, mm -hmm. It's a good question why. Like, maybe my mum picked it because my mum was quite, uh, she was yeah. quite strong in my racing, like, uh, yeah. bless her. And um, she, she would, um, uh, yeah, she'd she'd make me understand if I did good, I did good. If I did bad, it was like all bad till I come home from school Monday. Uh, then the bike stay in. You can race next weekend. Oh, thanks, mum. You know, so it, it, it was it was different them days. You know, like um, you had lots of characters in them schoolboy days. The parents were yeah. kind of very different to what they were now. Like uh, <laughs> I never forget there was um, a kid in the schoolboys. Um, I think it was Stephen Holmes. Yeah. Like his mum was savage with, with him. You know, I mean? you know what I mean? And um like and he was a bloody good rider, he was. You know what I mean? Like really good rider. Um and you know, my my mum would be you know, like quite hard when we were racing. My dad was kind of working shifts, so he would do the driving, get us the races, and um it's just as it was. I think my mum was a strong part of my racing back in the schoolboy days. What? Uh, who was the biggest influence in your career? Uh, probably my dad. So my, my my brother was the first one to ride, and then mm -hmm. uh, my dad built like a road bike into a motocross motocross kind of bike. And I never forget it. We we went to a track called Brumbo, which is in Wales, and um, it's still there now. The track is, and uh, my brother crashed, but we didn't see the crash. My brother. Um, was kind of angry. I wouldn't say temper. He, he wouldn't like me to say that, but he had a temper. So yeah. when we went over the brow, he had white overalls on. My dad had got from fiberglass and um, he was kind of going mental at the bike. And my dad was like, right, okay, Neil can have a go now. And then that's how it started. So my dad rode bikes uh, like he was a mod, you know, like a scooter. So he'd ride oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah, so he, he was that. And kind of my dad, <laughs> I would say, was the most influential, you know, like obviously... He bought me a Technomoto, then we went racing, and then we're racing every weekend, you know, two-day meetings. Um, then we got into the Nationals. So I raced a lot with, like, Paul Coward was, like, big competition back in the day. Um, yeah. Tony Bennett, um, Neil Miller, um, all people like that. Uh, Lee Williams, um, all them people, like, racing our area. So we were racing every weekend, and then we started the Nationals, and – it kind of went from there. I've, you, you know, it's like once you get hooked, my, my dad was hooked, my mum was hooked. My yeah, mum was more, my dad was more, my dad was like, yeah, one of the best mechanics I know, uh, an engineer, like he was fantastic engineer. So yeah. he kind of um, 
look after the bike. And I never forget because he worked at fiberglass where they make glass. And um, he would always make, um, when I was riding 80s, I wanted the, you know, when they used to have the, the white 80 and the yellow 80. And the yeah. yellow one was the LOP from America. Yeah. And um, my dad said, I can make that for you. And I said, oh, mega, mega. So he fiberglassed the, the front mud guard and the rear mud guard and the panels yeah. made it yeah. perfect, perfectly made, like copied mm. it and everything, but um, painted them yellow. It looked, it looked the nuts. And then um, basically, um, I forget the first race we went to, I think I went at the start straight and the mud guard just snapped and flew off behind me. And I was like, God. Oh, and I think I must have had at least four meetings where the mud guard just snapped off. Um, <laughs> But them days, you know, you it didn't really bother you because he'd make a new one and be like, "Oh, mega, here we go." Um, so yeah, we decided we we stuck with plastic after a few races and moved on that way. Really, yeah, I love that. I love that. Um, Ryan, uh, Ryan, just put. Do you remember going to Sweet Lamb in Wales? Sweet Lamb in Wales. Uh, What's that? What's that, Ryan. Mm. Sweet Lamb. That's where they do the rallying, isn't it? I don't know. That's all I need to know what you're talking about there. Don't know yeah. that one. I, I probably did. I'm a mem I, I know I've just talked a load of memories, but my memory remembers some stuff. Like I'm really bad at like some people come come and speak to me, like at the race, oh Neil, how's it going? I'm like, uh yep. Yeah. And they, they they you don't remember me, and I'm like, Oh no, I'm sorry. And then they'll say something which will remind me. And then I'm like, Oh right, yeah, I do remember now. Um I'm really wherever I've hit my head too many times or whatever, but I'm I'm terrible at remembering some 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 things sometimes. Really bad. This is interesting from Ben. He just said that he remembers the on the Honda riding the cat Honda. We we come up with all that earlier on Ben. You can check that out after. He's got, do you think uh, having a separate team for the donations like a team Wales, Team Scotland and Team England could work in the future instead of Team G B? Uh why not? Like you know what I mean? If if you can if you can put the team in, why not? Do you know what I mean? If you've got enough riders to do to do it as well, obviously, which, yeah. which we have, um, why not? I don't know how it how it works with sanctioning it or getting them in, but if you can do it, why not? You know, I think it's um, you know, like there's a there's a Wales flag, there's a Scottish flag, you know, like there is America, Japan, all that type of stuff. So yeah. you know, if you can take part and organize it, and someone wants to do it, why not? You know, you know what I mean? It's, it's no, you know, if you look at America, you know, they they put in Costa Rica. And in that Costa Rican time, team, they have Travis Pastrana, Kevin Windham, Ronnie Mack they were going to have. You mm. think, hold on, how can they do that? So surely if Wales wanted to put a team in or Scotland, for sure it can be done. Um, mm. I, I would have thought. Mm. Well, Ireland's obviously always has a team as well, and they're their own team. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. But it, but it's a big, it's a big, um, it's a big like when they come to um America last year, like Team mm. Ireland come to America, like mm. they they rented a lot of bikes off of us, like Team Estonia rented bikes off of us. The bikes were used from the nationals from Gilbert and um Charlie. So it's it's <coughs> if it's in France or it's in Germany, it's probably a lot easier than doing it what it is in in America or. You know, if they go somewhere further than that, it's quite a big job. The MX donations to get it, to get it all sorted. But yeah, why not? If they can get a team in, I don't see the problem in doing it. Really. Right here we go. So you put my dad used to talk about all the time, and now Wayne's just put it was Sweet Lamb Supercross Track, uh, Garrett Jones. Oh, uh, Wayne! Fa I can see it now. My eyes ain't great. Wayne Faulkner. There, there, there's another really good Welsh rider. Wayne. He's a good friend of mine. If you need electrical work done, he's the man in Wales. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's mega. Yeah, he's um, sweet lamb super cross track. No, I don't, but he's for sure. You'll text me and remind me about it for sure. <laughs> he is legendary mechanic. Yeah, he is Nick. He looks a bit different <laughs> on his picture, though. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? It looks like he's uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't look like the one I saw with Crockard at the uh, Fox Hill. <laughs> no, that's it. That's it. Yeah, he'll be getting ready. He'll be getting. He'll be getting his bikes ready for um, for Fox Hills this time. He will be for sure. Yeah, hope you're good, Nick. It was uh, a good to uh, just run into him and well, the little Glim and Gordon were just going off to the start, so it was a quick hello and bye, but quick picture. Yeah. And bye, but hopefully, I'll catch up with him a bit, uh, this year. It'll be good. 
Yeah, he's sure. a good, good character, Nick is, for sure. 100%. We've had some good times, me and Nick have. Like, um, he was a strong part of Cass Honda. Like, um, he set up the workshop in Belgium. So, basically, uh, Harry gave him the job of getting the workshop. And we were in that workshop for, I would say, nine years. And he did a tremendous job. I mean, you know, we, we were kind of a privateer team. So, you know, when, when he did the workshop, he did it by himself. You know, there was no question about it. And it was no different to, you know, like with what I do here or whatever. You kind of, um, he gets the job done. And um, that workshop, I never forget when we walked in there, I was like, bloody hell, like it, like, yeah, we, it was like another level up. Um, and it was unfortunate they kind of ended that way. But, you know, the, the end of the day, you know, like I, I, I learned that if you if you have the workshop in Belgium and, the sponsors aren't coming in. It's you know, it's it's a you know, you you'll spend at least two thousand on your on your rent, your your gas, your elec. You know, it just it goes up, and it's another budget you've got to find from somewhere. So yeah. I think um, a lot of teams uh, now the budgets are coming down is getting harder to operate in somewhere like Belgium or somewhere. You know, it's just um, very does cost a lot of money to run a team. It's quite um, scary how much or things people don't realise you have to pay for, which adds up to quite a lot, really. So uh, he's pretty much saying, Nick, that you were the, you were the nuts. <laughs> kind of, kind of, kind of saying still, that. Yeah, he, did good, he did a good job, did a good job, very much yeah. true. This is a cool question from Jacob here. I know he's a good uh, photographer, uh, he's, uh, getting out there. He said, what's the best looking track you have ever ridden? Where you go that wow factor type of thing and hello, Lee? Ah, uh, not where I've ridden, uh, Unadilla. La last year, last year when I went to Unadilla, yeah. we we drove there and it was um. So we left. We we flew into Texas, collected the truck from um, Mun Mun Racing, and there was uh yep. me, Paul Belfield, Scotty, the truck driver, and mm -hmm. Sid Putnam, the young Putnam. So we had to get the bikes ready, and then we looked at the map, and it was sixteen hundred miles to Unadilla. I was like, okay, we'll, we'll drive that. It's uh, 22 hours. We'll Easy, we'll do that. So we, we spent all day on the bikes and then um, woke up Wednesday and then kind of, right, let's get going, boys. Drove all day Wednesday till like 12 o'clock at night, got a hotel, woke up the next morning, 8 o'clock, drove again till 12 o'clock at night and we were still 400 miles away from Unadilla. So I'm like, Jesus Christ. So... <laughs> Friday morning, well, we, we pulled into Unadilla at um, 2.30 Friday. The riders have arrived. They're walking out. And I, honestly, I could have popped champagne when we got there. I was like so happy to get there. And um, <laughs> then I then we got the bike sorted, got all the bikes. And you, don't, you don't do technical there. You just, okay. the riders sign and they give you a sticker, put it on the bike. Yeah. So they come, did that. And then I thought, like, we'll go look at the track. And when I got to the track, it's the best track. I've ever seen in my racing career I blew my head clean off like and yeah, yeah. it was that that and i would say and i've said to a lot of people since last year said if you ever want to go to one event go to unadilla you will it's amazing the the green grass the layout of the track yeah. the you know the gravity cavity they call it the steep yeah. Yeah. Like, that is literally you know uh steepest it's like going off the side of your house you know, and it was just, yeah. So that, that to me is one of the best places I've, I've ever seen, to be honest. That's the trouble with the TVs. I so said, don't do the justice, does it? When you... It doesn't. It doesn't. And anyone who's a fan, I would say you, <clears throat> you need to go there and see that. You know, if you wanted to see, spend a bit of money and go look at one event, it is there. Like, and, and there as well. yeah, well, yeah. And one of them yeah. Ones. yeah, that's cool. Um, I was going to say, what's the best atmosphere you've ever been uh, at racing, racing and not racing? Uh, I, I was telling someone the other day that the, the, the like when I when I did the 500 Grand Prix at um, Hawkstone Park and I'll never oh, forget yeah. it. So I was I qualified pretty good. And I have quite a lot of friends up in Wrexham that are close to Hawkstone Park. Yeah. And um, when I was racing, I, I was driving up to the start line where you go, you know, like along the fence. And um, I think there was uh, my friend Jem was there um, and. Uh, Oh, uh, Jace was there, Jace Edwards, 
and all the other clan were there and they, they give me like such a big boost like they were like come on let's you know boost me and i thought that's the best feeling i've ever had going to a race going to a race myself um so that 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 man, i'll never forget that the way they they kind of cheered me on that day and there's about 20 of them there from my hometown which give me yeah give me a boost that's probably why i probably revved it too much and run out of fuel um, <laughs> But then um, the atmosphere, I would say uh, maybe I- Iron Man last year. Like uh, it was pretty impressive there. When um, yeah, like the the atmosphere at the AMA um, yeah. when you go to the crowd is pretty something else. Like the you know like um. Or even Ernie. Have you ever been to Ernie when they had the... Um... Yeah, that's mad as well, isn't it, Ernie? Oh, no. It was... Um, in the fact, Asians, they were there? Uh, it was St. John G- Giangeli. They, they, um, the French, oh, yeah, yeah. They have, um, like, um, engines in trolleys and a road, road bike and car engines, and they're revving them up all night and running them on um, brake cleaner and backfiring <laughs> everywhere. they that's a pretty good atmosphere. I would no, I would say there, like that. That's something else to see when the French crowd start going. Really, yeah. looks a little bit like Fox Hill, sort of up and down the hills. And... Yeah, it's a nice track. I've raced there uh, quite a quite a few times. Um, in right. fact, me and me and Nick, we we uh, the guy was Tony Johnson used to do my entries years ago. Yeah. So me and Nick, Nick, Nick will be thinking. I know what he's going to say here. We we took off. The guy give us the wrong directions for the track. So me and Nick took off down the south of France and we got to this track and we'd travel 10 hours or whatever, got there. And uh, we were like, oh, there's no one here. Bloody hell, they, you know, they're going to come tonight or whatever. They've got a lot of work to do. So then I made some calls, which I'm sure back in them days was like not, not easy. You know, you have to, in fact, you know, did I have a mobile? Well, whichever way, we, we got in touch with Tony Johnson said, oh, I've give you the wrong um the wrong ent- the wrong um address. You've got to go to St. John Angeli. And I remember it was something like six hours across the other side of the country. And me and Nick were like, yo, you're joking. So we had to drive another six hours across the country to go to St. John Angeli. And I think that was the first time we ever went there. But I'll never forget it because me and Nick were like, My God, we just driven, you know, the ferry halfway down the other side of Paris and I have to travel all the way across to to um near uh La Rochelle. So yeah. that was a bit of a mission Saturday that was to race on the Sunday. Ian's just put uh Neil, I was there with the nutter guys with the engines and the frames blowing up fl- blowing up flames. <laughs> oh yeah. The, 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 he saw it then. It was it was mind blowing because uh, you know like if you if you do a bit of mechanic in and um you, you understand that if a V eight a V six engine or V4 engine blows up and you're next to it, it ain't going to end pretty, is it? And they, no. they had three or four of them, or maybe more, just revving them in these trolleys, fire blaring out of them. Yeah, it was like pretty mental, really. No wonder <laughs> they um, they have the fire engines in there trying to put them out later on. <laughs> Said he went with the Putnams in 2011, still haven't got over the craziness of that weekend. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, it will have been, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely well, crazy, so crazy, for sure. Someone's just come on, put uh, Shed Millwood, Evening Princey. Oh, yeah, I know Sheridan Millwood, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you have any weird and wonderful superstitions when you raced, Neil? Any weird? Uh, <clears throat> uh, not really. I think I always put my right boot on first, which I put my right shoe on now pretty much all the time the same. Um, yeah. Not not really. No, yeah, nothing too, nothing, nothing too, too bad. I think a lot of people have... Yeah, I have a few, but no, nothing. Um, yeah, nothing I want to share. In any case, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> did you? Uh, did you do any other um, motorcycle stuff? Did you like try the grass track, speedway, road racing? Any of those things? You had a go at any of them? We had a Donington road bike day. Uh, me yeah. Nick and Steve McMillan went there, and I never forget we went. We went off down the track, and I looked down, and. I, I was like, well, we're doing 90 miles an hour. And I, so I never really got into, I never really got the road racing bug. I, I yeah. enjoyed it, but I don't know. For some reason, I was, I always kind of thought of the speed a little bit more. Um, and yeah, no, it wasn't for me that. We had a day, I, I, I'm sure Nick crashed that day and um, had oil all over. He crashed as you come onto the start line. 
and yeah. high sided in which I think a lot of riders do there. I never forget we we got in the van to go and we were like, God, no one's asked for anything. We, Nick's wrecked a bike and let's go. Out. I think Nick was concussed as well after that. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Some good so what, days. Uh, what other sports do you like watching? Do you like uh, watching other sports on the TV or like even going to other sports? Uh, I watch Formula One when I can. Uh, okay. I watch it as much, much as I can. Um, and I, I'm subjected to blogs pretty much all the time. So I watch Billy Bolt's blog, his mega. Oh, yeah, Tom, yeah, yeah. Tommy's blog. Um, yeah, yeah, I Kevin, have a Kevin Moran's. We, I work, we go for every blog nearly. So um, <laughs> I kind of sit for it and see what's going on, really. And if, if we're lucky on Moran's blog, you can see us in the background or, or doing something going on. So um, we get a little bit of air time there. Oh, I should check them ones then. <laughs> um, what's uh? Who was the any teammates you had? Was there any best and worst teammates? Uh, I, I mean, I've had I, nearly every teammate I've had has been fantastic. I mean, um, Carl Nunn at Cat Honda, fantastic. Nathan Shelton, proper character. Um, Adam Lyons, mega guy, mega guy. Um, Crockard, good guy. Um, but if every um, teammate had a different um with different different animals if yeah. that makes a bit of sense so you know you had um just yeah just every 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 person if i've worked with 20 riders or 20 or uh, not 20 team i didn't have too many teammates but every character is different like um and every rider is different as well like um and that's one thing that's a lot of people don't really see too much of. So if you've got a team of four riders, you've got four riders of completely different different needs, different different attitudes, different yes. personalities. And that's quite an interesting part where <laughs> I, I think we, we were chatting to someone in America and they, they were on about drive to survive. Yeah. And I said to them, like, drive, survive, need to come and do, um, go into, um, what's it called? Um, uh do do supercross i mean ama supercross or do world championship drive to survive need to do it themselves yeah and it would be very interesting on what different characters you you'd see do, do you know what i mean yeah. so um that i think could be i think you'd have much bigger characters than what you have in formula one that's my opinion yeah. um yeah. which would make quite good tv maybe just for the motocross people and it isn't big enough but i think if it went on netflix like they've done drive survive i think the yeah. popularity would go quite big, I think. Interesting, yeah. It would yeah, yeah, if, everyone, if someone could push for that, it would be quite mm. interesting to see. I think it would go massive. Like, it's, mm. Formula One has been from... Someone was telling me the other day that it kind of saved them a bit, going to drive to survive, got, the, got it going again big time, even though we don't see that side of it maybe dropping off or however. But yeah. the drive survive, I think it would be interesting if they if someone could pull that off to get them interested in it really yeah it would be good it would be good yeah do you have any regrets neil over your career any teams or bikes you rode or any teams you're in you wish you maybe had gone in a different direction at the time no not really like um i've, I've had good people around me um i've made good friends along the way um you know and all my friends are, are people i can call and rely on um so no like um no no regrets i mean i maybe could have been fitter i maybe could have you know um not fitter. I maybe could have. I, I think when my opportunity come along to to have better support, you know, which was like, um, you know, like uh, I had good support from Nick back in my racing days. I had good support from my parents, but I think I never really. I was always uh, struggling with like I've got to pay for diesel. I've got to pay for this. I've got to pay for that. Where maybe I just wasn't good enough to get 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 a get a better deal money wise um and that could have helped but i'm i've, I've got no regrets like no I, I i've had a i've had a good go at it uh i've got a good life um good people around me good family good friends so i, I can't I, I wouldn't change anything to be honest um i just wouldn't have um, maybe went out the last time and broke my shoulder that's the one regret i do regret just riding too much that night really was there any riders back in the day that you always used to come together with out on track? Didn't particularly like racing. Was there any guys like that that used to? Uh, not really. I I think 
you know, like um, you know, like now you 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 know, you see riders maybe being a bit dirty and stuff like that. I just mm. I, I don't think it's like it was back in the day. Like uh, you know, you'd come up against um, Max's dad, Merv. I mean, you wouldn't know which way he's going to go, what what he's going to do. Um, and I'm not knocking him. I'm not knocking him at all. What I'm trying to say is, he rode you hard. Mm. Where nowadays, if someone's caught even touching a guy, it's like, oh, he stuffed me. And you're like, dude, you go back days ago. Like, you'd be yeah. brake checked three, four times in a British Championship race. <laughs> when, when was the last time you saw someone brake checked? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, really. That ways it's changed quite a lot. So, yeah. um, not really. I mean, you know, Merv, Merv back in the day, Jared Smith back in the day, um, yeah. uh, uh, Mark Banks back in the day. Them people, uh, you know, you you knew not to mess with them guys. Do you know what I mean? Like uh, you, you, you know, you, they wrote your heart. So I yeah. think them days when I was coming up on when I went there, I like I, I think I did. A, I, I don't know. I didn't. Uh, you know, you have to qualify for the British Championship, and then when you when you qualified for the British Championship uh, into the top forty, the top forty was a savage class back in them days. Like, mm. um, and to me. Yeah, that, that you know, I much enjoyed the two fifty one two five championship from the from the the top forty races. Top forty races were quite difficult back in the day for me. Any case, like yeah. uh, I was young and yeah, it was a bit of a struggle. That was really. I mean, that was proper as well. The whole qualifying to be in the British, you have to qualify for a year to be in it, and that was good. Yeah, that that's where I, you know, that that's how I think. Um, you know, like. If the riders getting less on the line, I think they need to try and work a system out where you get all the riders two fifty, four fifty, all in the same line, mm -hmm. and then have another another group which is a support group or whatever, so they can they can earn a bit of money in there. And actually, you know, if you get a guy who's finishing twentieth regularly and he wins a support race or the next level up, gives him the confidence, and then when he's got the confidence, he can come back into the the top forty and go right. I can have a go here and his mm. confidence is high. And I think if you can build confidence in some of the riders who are 20th back, they will perform better when they get into the top 40. But, you know, what am I to say that? It's just my, my opinion that, um, you know, they Never need to try and, you know, yeah. I wouldn't mind having 250, 450s together, you know, yeah. the 250 guys, well, it's unfair, or whatever, but if they separate it differently and you have 40 of the best riders on the line. And then there's another class of 30 or 40 riders. And then, you know, if they do well in the first two rounds of that, they qualify and then you bring down the others from the other, you know, they, they could do something like that where I think they can try and build a bit of confidence in the, not lesser riders, the 20th place rider to get him further up in the, in the, in the, in the top 40 class, yeah. something like that. You know, they, they yeah. can do something like that really. Cause when we were racing, you had the top 40 and then you had just, it was called the support support class i think and then when you did three of the support classes and if you were top three in the championship or top three in them races the next round you'd be in the top 40 yeah. but you'd go into the top 40 thing and yeah I'm, I'm i'm going pretty good i can do well and you'd start in a solid position really it's weird isn't it because we're sort of almost like we're in this modern world now but it's almost like we could do it going back to some of the the things that have been like done a long time ago yeah, what, 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 why, why not? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, to me, you know, if, if you've got a lineup of 20, 28 riders in the MX1 class and you want 40 in the line, you've got to put them together. And, you, yeah. you, you know, you, you know, like, um, you know, we've had Elliot Banks Brown riding the 250F bike for us. You know, he's, he's been the last round, he would have won both motos at um, Schoolhouse. Yeah. Yeah. Just unfortunately, he caught a rut in the, in the first race and, um, broke the rear chain guard and derailed the bike, the chain. Mm. But he had that race won and he won the next race. So that gives you, you know, like to me, if he was in the MX1 class on a 250, to me, he's still getting a top result. But if, mm. he's, if his class separately, he'd still be, you know, people like like Elliot and that they're, they're still top quality riders. And I think, um, you know, like if you can put the, you know, at least, 2020 together i think the 250f guys can still finish inside the top 10 or potentially even win a race do, do you know what i mean like it's not impossible for them to do that so i think that would give an overall um a better quality race for everyone 
and it would also make the 250s work harder in that race and the 450 guys you know will be caught out on some of them tracks as well so to me mm. that you know if they're, if they're struggling for entries just put the 250 450s together and do like an, another class where you can build a bit of confidence and then when you're doing well there you step up to the top 40 and then if the top 40 is struggling they drop down to support class to get a bit of confidence back in their riding yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good idea. Because there's nothing better than, than crossing the line, winning a race. Do you know what I mean? Like to me, um, and that confidence then builds. If you win a race, whether it's a support race or not, it gives you that confidence to go yeah. to the next level, really. Yeah. yeah. That's, uh, who do we go to this with? <laughs> uh, yeah. No, it's, I mean, there's probably plenty of people looking, going, yeah, yeah, what, whatever. But, you know, to me, you know, it's it, more interesting. You need to get them together, you know, like for sure, Tarviku can, and, can have a good result against the MX1 guys, vice versa, you know, can probably win a race, you know, like Gifting's there, for sure he could he could win a race on the right track. You know, yeah. them, 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 you know, Taviku, Gifting, Banks Brown, Taylor Hamill, they're, they're all good riders. So yeah. why, why not? I, you know, I, I don't think there'd be too much complaints if they do run them together. They, they did do back in, I think we had two races separately and then the end of the day you had yeah. like the, the yeah, super yeah. final. Um, yeah. And I, I don't remember moaning about riding against the bigger bikes. You just yeah. another race, get on with the job, really. And it, was, it was good for the spectators as well. I remember being at Cullum and seeing Malin like, out there with Nickel and all that on the 125. And, yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was it was good as well. Like you said, they've had some sort of like sort of super finals, haven't they, where they've done it at Hawkstone for one race and stuff like that. But, yeah, and it were to me, they were, you know, you you get some complaints, but still, like you know, if you want to change something or try something, it's mm. worth trying to see mm. if it if it's a step forward, really. Mm. If you're listening, Gareth, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I might send that to Gareth later. <laughs> Do that one. <laughs> this is no, a good I'm question, not. Jacob. He's just put. Uh, you should come on again, Jacob. You come out with a couple of cheeky little questions but if you could ride with another rider who would you choose past and present Poof, um, that's a good question um, uh, poof. well i don't know someone so like um poof. it's a good question that is <laughs> probably i'd probably go with someone like hacking car because to something it'd be interested like i i just never forget him a hawkstone park on that Air called Yamaha, just watching everything and Jesus, how's he how's he put it around here like that? Do you know what I mean? Like in um, certain tracks, like so, I was always interested in the in the YZ, you know, the air called bike. I still like looking at it now, and yeah, then yeah. went to the YZM, and because uh, obviously I was um, I was twelve years old or whatever when I used to watch him. So yeah, he's one character I I, ne I never met him. Like not not that I would have met him, but I, he's one person I never saw him saw. You, and I saw him, but never, you know, never got to meet or say yeah, anything to because yeah. he passed away. But yeah. still, um, yeah, he was a legend, really. Like, uh, mm. yeah, so I'd like to, yeah, that'd be, yeah, I'd like to spend some laps with him. He probably, he would park you as well. I'm pretty sure of that. Oh, 100%. <laughs> yeah, he would, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and run you over, probably. I'll let you go, mate. I really appreciate you've had two and a half hours. I appreciate your time. I know you were a bit jet lagged from your trip and everything. I do appreciate it. We'll have to do a part two do that with quite a lot of the riders because it's just uh it's time flies <laughs> yeah yeah no worries absolute pleasure absolutely it's, it's, good. it's good now because i'm wide awake now till about four o'clock in the morning so okay all right i appreciate it neil and we'll do, definitely right. do another one i that'd be good if you could all right superb yeah no problems at all just just let me know and i'll, I'll be there no no problem thanks neil really appreciate it buddy right. and good luck for your boy at the weekend as well all right superb thank you all the best. thanks neil legend right. thank you mate bye bye cheers mate Beautiful. Love that. We'll have to get uh, Neil on again. Didn't even ask half of my questions. <laughs> time flies and all that, doesn't it? And then I was looking at the time and I thought, shit, shit. I better get off of here, aren't I? Get some tea as well. <laughs> but uh, yeah, loved Neil Prince. Uh, I even forgot to put my picture up with him as well, look. <laughs> Neil presenting me with my uh, trophy look that I won at the presentation of the Morden Club. All the, all the pro riders back then when we were in the schoolboys in the BSMA always used to do the, uh, I think we've been presented by Greg Hansen and 
Colin Thomas was at our reunion. Uh, who else? Jeremy Watley, Rob Herring, who was one of my heroes as well. They've all presented all our trophies over the years. And I did show this to Neil the other day, so he has seen it. But uh, there we go. Get some right uh, good clothes and clobber we had on as well in the schoolboy days. <laughs> that was quite tame, this one. <laughs> Definitely taller, though, than uh, Neil then. And I was probably about 16. <laughs> I think that might have been winning the 1T5 senior group, I think that one was. But I've got loads of cool pictures with Priest, Ricky Priest and Rob Herring. Presented our trophies, Greg Anson. Yeah, I've got some cool ones. I have to post them up. Hey, Ian, top man. Thanks, mate. Got some cool ones coming up. Uh, Bruce Pennell tomorrow night, 7 p.m. UK time. Uh, I'm going to do Paul Edmondson on Monday evening, uh, 8 p.m. So it's 7 p.m. tomorrow night with Bruce Pennell, then 8 p.m. live on Monday night with uh, legendary Paul Edmondson. And then I'll uh, keep you all in touch with what I'm going to do next with the motocross ones and Speedway. And then, uh, yeah, all those people that have been waiting for pictures from yesterday, I did. Uh, I will get back to you all. Yes. Good shout. Make it happen, Jason. <laughs> get James on it. I'd love to get James on as well. We can talk about that Canada Heights British Championship win and all that. And we can talk about him running into me at Farley. <laughs> he didn't actually, but talk about 100cc racing days, racing with James. That was cool. I think I've got a cool picture of um, at Langrish 1991 BSMA champions, champions. Uh, there's a picture of Carl Nunn in front and there's me just behind him. I think you can just see James behind me as well. But yeah, cool days. Thanks, Jacob. Come on again, buddy. Got some cool questions, mate. No problem, Andy. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks for all coming on. Appreciate all your questions. Like I said, I didn't go through half of mine. If I see your questions, I ask them first. It's uh, good to be with all the family, friends, and uh, race fans and all that as well. So I will... Um, I don't know what that's still doing up there. Forgot to ask Neil about that as well. Looks a bit of a massive off there at Canada Heights. Jesus. Talk about that next time as well. <laughs> but yeah, I got uh, still loads of questions I didn't get to ask him. So we'll uh, get that done another another night. I've got to do lots of part twos as well. Cheers, Dick. Thanks for coming on, buddy. Hope you're good. Hope you're on the old camera at the weekend. Cheers, buddy. No, no, that's cool, mate. Love the questions. They were cool. Thinking outside the box as well, which I like. They were good. Bring it back, buddy. And uh, hopefully I'm going to have some cool ones coming up. I've been talking to loads of riders, so uh, let's get back on it. And then uh, hopefully I'll announce our new dates for our Battle of Britain soon, which is going to be the 14th and 15th of October. And uh, mention all that soon and a track and all that as well. So I'll get on that as well soon. And uh, yeah, I'll get back to all you uh, guys from uh, Grittingham yesterday, practice day. And it uh, won't be long, and I'll get back on that in a minute while I'm eating some food. All right. Thanks, for everyone, for coming on. I'll leave it with my dad saying there. Look, you can see it in the background, the T-shirt, the Andy Grahams and Jill Graham got that for me. Look, it's nice to be important, but it's important to be nice from my dad. There you go, look, the old Ashby Levers, Swindon Robbins. Still in Swindon now, look, in the, in the little spare bedroom in Swindon. Speaking to all my idols and heroes of all you guys, been pretty cheeky. Lots more to do. I remember three years ago, everyone was going, oh, Lee, you've run out of things than that you're doing, and no chance. Plus, I did all Skype ones, and I got to get them all on live ones with the fans and all that as well, and put pictures up. and Really cool. But, uh, yeah, we're back on it. Uh, speak to you all soon. Good night, and God bless. Cheers. Speak to you all soon. <laughs>